Okay, so, so we'll go around the Terry Labani video from last. Week. Okay. NASCAR Today is brought to you by the NASCAR Story, the complete history of NASCAR on home video. To order, call 1-800-71-NASCAR. Well, 90,000 fans are here to witness what is certainly one of the most exciting events of the year, and it's just 32 and a half minutes away. This is one of the toughest tickets to get, and let me tell you, they're going to be putting more and more seats in here in coming years, so try and get on the list. Chad Little, Bobby Hillen, a couple of surprise starters here tonight. Derek Cope and Bobby Allison's 12 car also ready for the start of this race. Jim Sauter will be substituting for Kyle Petty, who is sitting this one out. Bill Elliott also sending it out tonight. All the drivers right now are in their trucks. And speaking of trucks, Mike Skinner is the reigning Truck Series champion. He's in Watkins Glen, New York, and fortunately, Dave Despain is there too, looking ahead to tomorrow's big race at the Glen. Thanks, guys. We're back at Watkins Glen to talk road racing with the man here. He's the champion. He's the current point leader, Mike Skinner. Also an experienced road racer, right? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> How many of these have you run? This will be the uh, fourth one, I guess. But listen to this. In three previous races, fifth, third, and first, you're a quick learner. I want to know what you have to concentrate on to get that truck around here effectively and win the race. Well, qualifying is really important. If you qualify up front and can stay up front, that's the deal. If you know, the biggest thing you do wrong on a road course is overdrive it for what little experience I have. I'm, I'm not trying to sound like a road racer, but you got to stay on the racetrack. And if you run off the racetrack here, you go from first to 15th. It's that easy. And, uh, you know, what we're going to do is try to concentrate on taking care of the position that we're in. If we're in fifth, you're probably not going to win the race. All you can do is put pressure on the guy in front of you, hope that he makes a mistake, and he finishes 15th. But... It's a deal where if you try to fabricate a win on a road course, it, most of the time it's not going to happen, Dave. The strategy from the man and the bottom line, keep it on the road. They could use that same advice at Bristol. We'll be back later to wrap it up, guys. I'll tell you what, you got to keep it on the road here, and the lane is not very wide. Now, we've talked about the three truck. That's Mike Skinner at Watkins Glen. Here, of course, it's the Goodrich Service Chevrolet. Dale Earnhardt qualified 23rd for tonight's race. How long will he stay in the car? How will it go? Well, right now he's resting in a pickup truck, but that rest will gonna it will end shortly, just about a half hour from now. More on Dale Earnhardt's medical situation from a doctor, Jerry Punch. Hey, thanks, Bill. In fact, Earnhardt should be coming around the corner here in a moment, a little slower than we'll see him come around tonight, but you're talking about the injuries. We saw what happened at Watkins Glen. What courage two weeks ago, managing to qualify and run the whole race. And he also ran the Michigan race, but Bristol was a totally different animal. Rarely can a driver run 500 laps here and not hit something or someone. And even if you're Dale Earnhardt, that's going to happen, and he knows that. And that's why in practice here with the G-forces, he was very, very uncomfortable in the car. Shouldn't say uncomfortable. He was very, there was a lot of pain involved in the shoulder. And the reason is the head goes this way in the turns. The shoulder harness pulls the shoulder this way. And that means that the clavicle gets separated, gets pulled apart. That's where the break is, the collarbone. And that's where the pain is. That's why they have Mike Wallace standing by to get in the car. Mike ran the car yesterday, ran the car quite a bit today. But a few moments ago, I asked Dale in the truck, in the pickup truck with prior to driver introductions, how long will you go? He looked at me and said, Doc, how long's the race? 500 laps, I'll see you when it's over. I don't know how he'll do it, but that's what he hopes to be able to do. Bill? Okay, Jerry, thanks a lot. We'll be watching Earnhardt all night to see how long he stays in that car and how it handles on the racetrack. Upstairs tonight, well, it's going to be a crowded place. Ned Jarrett will be up there later, but right now we can go up top to Bob Jenkins and Benny Parsons. And by the way, Benny will be in New York tomorrow to help Dave on the truck race, right? Yes. As soon as this race is over tonight, I'm leaving, going to New York, and Dave Despain and I will be in the booth for the truck race, and also the modified race on ESPN2. Only 10 more races to go, believe it or not, in the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season. The points race is a good one, especially among the top four in points, as uh, they are separated by just about 147 points. And Gordon and Earnhardt are tied. Now, point standings are important, but 
you can throw everything out the window when you come to Bristol. You know, those four guys we talked about, just 137 points separating the first four, they've got to be concerned about Bristol. Getting through this race tonight unscathed, the prime, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Well, I don't know. they got to get through this race. they got to get through this race if they're going to try to win the championship. They don't have to. They can obviously go on and win the race, rest of the races in the season. But tonight is really critical to get through this race. Terry Labonte, of course, uh, is the defending champion of this race. Jeff Gordon has also had a good record here. In fact, all the top four have, except possibly Dale Jarrett, who has never won on a short track, but certainly has the best average finishing position in the last six races. Let's go back to Bill. Okay, Bob, let's take a look at the rest of the starting field. We got you through the top 15. Morgan Shepard will start 16th here tonight. Then it's Hutt Strickland, our Sunday driver, Jeff Burton, Brett Bodine, and old DW, who's won here 12 times, rolls off 20th. Ward Burton and Bobby Labonte are in row 11. Then Earnhardt starts 23rd tonight next to Dave Marcus, who had a good qualifying run. Dick Trickle was the last man to make the field in the first round of qualifying. Then it's Lake Speed, Gary Bradbury and Ted Musgrave, Johnny Benson and Rick Mass round out the top 30. Robert Presley, Wally Dallenbach, Jim Sauter, in the Coors Light car, subbing again for Kyle Petty. John Andretti got the last spot on speed. Then provisionals went to Bobby Hamilton, Jeremy Mayfield, Derek Cope, Chad Little, and the Cartoon Network Chevrolet. And Bill Elliott used a past champions provisional, but then this afternoon, Elliott decided he would not be able to drive here, and Bobby Hillen will be in the McDonald's for tonight. The crowd cheering for Dale Earnhardt. They admire the man, and they admire the effort he's put forth in the last few weeks. 26 and a half minutes before the green flag flies here at Bristol. How important is qualifying? 71 NASCAR Winston Cup races at Bristol. 62 of the 71 winners have started inside the top 10. Stand by. Okay. Brett Bodine and Jeff Burton waving to the 90,000 fans that are packed into Bristol Motor Speedway tonight for the Goodies Headache Powder 500, just about 25 minutes away. The clock is ticking and the hearts are pounding. The drivers are busy on the track during this race and the crew chiefs are busy on pit road. What are they doing? They're pacing and praying. For more on that, John Kernan with Larry McReynolds. Well, Larry McReynolds, crew chief for Ernie Irvin and that Robert Yates racing team, along with Dale Jarrett, squad led by Todd Pirrip, the hottest team in NASCAR right now, Larry. But, Dick, some anxious moments here because you really can't predict how things are going to turn out at Bristol, can you? No, you really can't. You know, the, the racetrack got rained on really hard, and it washed a lot of the rubber away. And our, both teams, we've made some adjustments based on that. Now, I'm sure it won't be long in the race before it gets right back to where it was. But, you know, track position's everything, and you got so many cars that's so close. Just look at qualifying. But hopefully we can keep that Robert Yates racing momentum going here tonight and uh, carry it on to Darlington, get that million dollars next week. Talk about the competition being close and qualifying. Ernie is eighth, Dale ninth, separated by three thousandths of a second. How do you guys build cars exactly alike like that? We really worked hard this year on that, and you've seen that a lot. Now, there's been a few times we've been close together at the back of the field, but, you know, we're trying to get them qualified up near the front, and that's real important here tonight at Bristol because... 
it takes forever to pass. It's a one-groove racetrack, and, and you just can't pass. That's what I just stressed to the pit crew in a team meeting. Any positions we lose here on pit road, it could take 10, 15 laps to make it up on the racetrack. That's Larry McReynolds there getting, waiting for Ernie and Dale to come back around in their pickup trucks, get out of there and get in the cars and go to work. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. All right, John, let's show you a shot of Team Hendrick. That's Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte. They start second and third. That's two-thirds of Hendrick Motorsports. Of course, Kenny Strader driving the Budweiser Chevy. He is the third driver, all three of which could be contenders tonight. I'm with Ray Abraham and Ray. Last time we were here, it was damp, it was rainy, it was overcast, and your car went to victory lane. Hey, it could be an omen. Yeah, that was in the spring. You know, we've done well in the spring race here, but have a little trouble getting a handle on the racetrack at night. So, you know, we kind of got fooled. It was real hot, and then it got cold in the last practice, so I think everybody was scrambling a little bit. So the first 100 laps ought to be exciting. What about the rain shower? Some of the people were guessing in the early practice today at 1 o'clock, and then the rains came for about two hours. How will the track be different? Jerry, you know, it, it, it's been loose since we've been here, and then it got tight in that last practice, and now the rain's washed the rubber away. So it's going to be a completely different track until the rubber gets on it. And then once probably 100 laps are, are through, you're going to be, you know, you, if you guess loose, you could be really loose or, or really tight. It's going to be tough. Um, I think everybody's got a lot of spring rubbers in and, and making some pressure adjustments. Goodyear brought a new tire, so everybody's starting from square one. You once told me that when your team goes a couple weeks without winning, you start to panic. You think, man, maybe we're not going to win again. You know, it's been almost a month since Talladega, although you've won six times this year. Yeah, I'm telling after you don't win for a week, you, you think you're never going to win again. So I hope we can come out here with a win tonight, uh, if not a good finish. You know, you need to be, if you've got a whole car here on a lead lap with 100 laps to go, you've got a pretty good chance. So that's what we've got to do. Hey, the man who commands the Rainbow Warriors, Ray Everham, his driver starts on the outside of row one. And the guy who starts third is his colleague at Hendrick Motorsports, John Kernan. And that is Gary Dehart, the crew chief for Terry Labonte. This race last year, Gary, you guys came within what a few hundred feet of leaving here with a perfectly good car with no scratches on it you won the race but uh, there's that little incident there at the end how about tonight what about this car well this is a good car this is a new car we hadn't raced it one time this year uh that car we had here last year was a good car but Dale Earnhardt was the last one to work on it so <laughs> he didn't do a good job at fixing it so we, uh, we we brought a new one back up here now the points you guys are leading the points right now Races are winding down to the end of the season. Starting to feel any pressure? Uh, yeah. If I said it wasn't feeling pressure, I'd be lying. You know, it gets it, a lot to think about. It's a big thing for us. You know, uh, we really do want to win it. Hey, what about, uh, well, you guys start third tonight. Gary Dehart, crew chief for Terry Labonte. Let's go to Bill Weber now. Okay, John, standing by, drivers getting back to pit road, getting ready to climb in their cars for tonight's race. And don't forget, if you want to get on the information, Super Speedway, NASCAR online, www.nascar.com. You can find out things like short track points in 1996. Jeff Gordon has 710. Terry Labonte is second with 598. Rusty Wallace is third. And Dale Earnhardt in fourth, is fourth in short track points 20 minutes away can you feel the excitement i sure can right here at bristol it rained a year ago here we finished the race at 12 25 a.m that really cut into benny's beauty sleep It was an exciting 30 hours for Jeff Fuller. A new Earnhardt is right by. He's talking to Daryl. Well, Eli's there too, but. Okay, John's down here. Okay, I'm going. What are we doing?
18 and a half minutes before the green flag falls here at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Goodies Headache Powder 500. John Kernan. Well, Dale Jarrett talking to a screw and pack signing a hat for a fan. And Dale, I guess one of the hottest drivers right now. I mean, you got some momentum going last night in the Bush race, finished second. What about tonight? Uh, hopefully we can do at least that, uh, if not a little better. We've got a pretty good car. You know, 500 laps around here is difficult. Uh, you just have to stay out of trouble, keep the fenders on it. But uh, I think that we've got a good shot. What about all the rain we've had and, uh, you know, washing off the uh, rubber off the track? Uh, how will that change things in the first 50 to 100 laps, or does it? Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, the track will probably be a little bit looser to start with, uh, tend to slide around a little bit more after we get some rubber on here. So uh, probably be a little freed up to begin with, but uh, should come in later on. All right, that's Dale Jarrett starts ninth in tonight's race. Let's go now to Bill Weber. Okay, and right here around, around the Western Auto Parts America, Chevrolet Darrell Waltrip is holding court, the winner of 12 races at this track, seven wins in a row. How did you do that? You know, it, it, I always think about that when I come here, and just finishing seven races in a row here is a, a real feat, but it was just one of those times in my career when everything was right. I had the right car with the right team. And, uh, you know, it was just a great time in my life. Uh, won championships, won races. Never thought it would ever quit. <laughs> Some magic for tonight, DW? I'm awful good. Uh, the Western Auto Chevy's running good, and the team is up, and I'm up. And, you know, we get up when we come here. We know we can do it here. They know I can do it here. A uh, little bit of patience and a little bit of luck. And uh, I told them, I said, this victory circle still right down here in uh, turns three and four? I, I hope it is, because that's where I remember it being. Okay, Darrell Waltrip, he's hoping to be able to find that tonight to Jerry Punch. Well, the seven-time Winston Cup champion climbs in the Chevrolet, the Goodrich Chevrolet. Bobby Hutchins, his co-crew chief, talking to Dale Earnhardt. They have been working all weekend to try to make Dale more comfortable in the car. They have worked with the seat, the steering wheel. And the big question is, champ, have you been able to get comfortable? Uh, and how far can you go? Well, I hope I can go all the way. Uh, got a few more braces in here. You know, the neck muscles, I think, is the biggest thing that bothers me, and they're hooked to where the collarbone's broken. It, it really it gave me a lot of aggravation yesterday, uh, practicing and, and all, and a little bit today, but not as much today as it yesterday, so I feel better today. Some of the guys said, well, I think Dale will get out early, but uh, for, for them, early may be lap 20. For you, early could be what, Monday or Tuesday? <laughs> I got to test Richmond Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. Okay, the seven-time Winston Cup champion, folks, he has been a herding puppy all weekend. They will have Mike Wallace standing by, but Mike might just do that, Bill Weber. He might just stand by. Well, that wouldn't surprise me at all, Jerry. A couple of things to keep in mind. Jeff Fuller won the pole for the Bush race last night, and then he won the race. His wife gave birth to their third child Thursday night, so congratulations to Jeff and his wife on a great weekend. Lots more coming up here from Bristol Motor Speedway, and of course, there's a little race they are going to run here in a few minutes, too, so put a little closer to that television and get ready for the Goodies 500. John. Okay. Okay. The Spain is first, right? Welcome back to Bristol. Just under 14 minutes to the green flag here for the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Terry Labonte is the Winston Cup points leader. He's already sitting in his Kellogg's Cornflakes Chevrolet. RPM tonight. 
tomorrow with Kenny Mayne. You got the morning edition and you got the evening edition on ESPN2. Make it part of every Sunday. And then it's the John Kearney Show. I mean, RPM tonight, Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock on ESPN2. Benny on Mondays, Jerry Punch on Tuesdays when he's not doing football, which is something else he's got coming up. So there's plenty coming up. RPM tonight, make it a part of your menu six days a week. Let's go back to Watkins Glen. Dave Despain is there for the Parts America 150 tomorrow. It's the Craftsman Super Truck Race. And Dave standing by for a preview of the Sunday racing. All right, guys, we've heard from Skinner, the top trucker. This is a NASCAR modified, fresh off the Featherlight Tour. These guys and their open wheelers have how much road racing experience? This much. It's going to be wild trying to keep these babies on the road. It's going to happen tomorrow, and the rundown looks like this. We kick it off at 12.30 Eastern time tomorrow afternoon, the Parts America 150 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. That's on ESPN. Then we hop to ESPN2 at 3 o'clock for 100 miles, 40 laps with the NASCAR Featherlight Modified Tour. It's going to be a great afternoon. I hope you'll be here for all of it. Parsons, get your tail up here and get to work. Have fun at Bristol. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, Benny's going up there. He'll be part of the truck race. We've got some work to do tonight. And one guy's going to be working hard is John Kernan, and he's with Rusty Wallace, who's also going to be working, John. That's right, and Rusty is strapping himself into his Miller Ford. And Rusty, you've won here before, won your first career once to cup race here. How are you running tonight? Running really good. The thing's running great. We've had uh, real good success the last couple days. Had a good qualifying run. This, this afternoon's uh, late last happy hour practice was real good, so... Baby's all systems go right now. Let's hope I can take her to victory lane. Never ready for him. Rusty Wallace starts fifth. Let's go to Bill Weber. Terry Labonte's talking to his crew. He just put on his helmet. He won here one year ago, sliding across the finish line and then crashing after he took the checkered flag. And I don't think we're going to get a chance to talk to Terry, but I'll tell you what, if he's in victory lane tonight, we'll certainly get a chance to talk to him after then. Terry, exciting moment one year ago. How about tonight? How's your car? Well, it was pretty decent in practice there, so I don't know. I think we'll be close. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a good run, good run tonight. Okay, that's Terry Labonte. He's the Winston Cup points leader. Those two guys, Earnhardt and Gordon, tied for second, 134 points behind him. Eight active drivers with wins here at this track. Darrell Waltrip has 12. Earnhardt has eight. Rusty Wallace with five. Jeff Gordon has a pair. So does Terry Labonte, Bill Elliott, Ernie Irvin, Mark Martin. All in this field with the exception of Elliott, who will not start tonight. He gives up to Bobby Hillen. And Hillen attempted to qualify for this race, missed it by one one-thousandth of a second. So we're getting set here for racing. There's F1 boat racing right here on the Deuce coming up next. On the Classic, it's the Goodies Headache Powder 500 with Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon sharing the front row. So if you're a race fan for NASCAR Winston Cup, get ready. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And NASCAR Winston Cup Racing coming up on the Classic. We've all seen athletes who play hurt and somehow manage to help their team. Well, no better example of that in motorsports than what this man did two weeks ago at Watkins Glen. Somehow managed to put this car on the pole and qualify with a new track record and hang on for 90 laps for a sixth-place finish. Then last week at Michigan, well, he ran all day and unbelievably escaped uninjured in this wild spin late in the race, brought the Chevrolet home in 17th spot. The Bristol Motor Speedway, well, it's hard to run 500 laps here and not hit somebody or something. And Earnhardt's record over the years, well, like everyone else, he's had his number of problems here. He's been banged and beaten and bruised and battered. This concrete doesn't give very much. But here is the problem tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway. Dale Earnhardt's problem is the clavicle is still broken. And with the clavicle right here, the collarbone, here's what happens. It goes in the corner, his body and head goes to the right, and that belt pulls down right on the fracture site, trying to pull those bones apart. Not only that, the muscle that holds his head up and part of the neck attaches right on top of the clavicle, folks. That's going to be painful. The word is they're going to have Mike Wallace standing by. This camp says Earnhardt could get out early. The team says early could be, well, lap 25 or 30. But Earnhardt says early could be Sunday morning. Now, two other drivers will miss the Battle of Bristol tonight. Bill Elliott, Bill Elliott in the car number 94 will have Bobby Hillen subbing for him. And Kyle Petty will have Jim Sauter in his car. Both those drivers expected to be back at Darlington next week. For more, let's go to Bill Weber. Well, Jerry, Mark Martin hasn't won a race this season. And last week, he not only lost the race, 
they broke his heart. Dale Jarrett passed him with eight laps to go, but tonight, Mark Martin is back on the pole at Bristol. A familiar spot. Four straight poles at this track. He's fifth in points, but Mark Martin hasn't won a Winston Cup race in 24 events. Speaking of 24, next to him is Jeff Gordon in car number 24. Starting on the front row for the 10th time this season. He won in the spring race. He's tied for second in points. Next is Terry Labonte, the man that Gordon is chasing in points. Terry won this race a year ago. It was his second career win at Bristol. His first career win came 12 years ago tomorrow. It was 1984. It was his only win. Oh, yeah, he also won the championship that year. But if you believe in numbers, how about Rusty Wallace? He qualified fifth. He's won here five times. He's looking for his fifth win of the season. He starts behind car number five. Oh, yeah, his last win five races ago. Now let's go to John Kernan. Bill, I got three sleepers for you. You got the 21, the 41, and the 81. Kenny Wallace, a Bush Series victory here. Michael Walter also has a Bush Series victory here. And how about Ricky Craven? His crew chief, Charlie Presley, made some last-minute changes that they hope will make that car a rocket ship. And now let's go to our national anthem. Tonight to sing the national anthem for the Goodies Headache Powders 500. Her first CD is gold in the U.S. It's platinum in Canada. She's currently up for seven Canadian CMA awards, including Entertainer of the Year. Join me now in welcoming Mercury recording artist, Miss Terry Clark. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets ran glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say What's going to happen at Bristol? What do you predict, man? I tell fans, the only thing you can predict at Bristol is that you can't predict anything. There are so many variables here that 
you can't predict who's going to win this race. You know who's going to run good, and you know that the winner's in the past. And Daryl Walter, seven in a row, I still don't understand how he ever did that. But things happen so quick on this racetrack that you can get caught up in somebody else's mistake and uh, can be out of this thing in a second. And mostly, most of those things are caused by track position. Sometimes a slow car will stay out, gas only, change two tires, get in front of a, of a faster car. It's kind of like... You know, when you go to the mall on Christmas and you, know, you get in those long lines, you know, your patience only can last for so long, and then you get you start doing things you shouldn't do. Those fast cars only have patience for so long. They start beating on another car. Pretty soon, we have a spin, and as you said, Ned, several cars involved. Stay tuned, folks. It's going to get exciting. The excitement begins to build. We only have 10 more races to go in the 1996 NASCAR Winston Cup season, and one through four in the points are separated by just 137, with second and third tied, and six through 10 are only 120 points apart. So a close, tight race as we go into this uh, event here at Bristol Motor Speedway. And of the top four, Three of them have won a race here. The only exception is Dale Jarrett. He's never won on a short track. However, he is the hottest driver on the circuit right now. He has scored more points and has the best average finishing position of anyone in the last six races. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for tonight's Goodies Headache Powder 500. On the pole is Mark Martin, and alongside will be Jeff Gordon. And in row two, there's Terry Labonte, the winner here last, well, what an exciting race last year, and also Ricky Craven. And in row three, we have Michael Walter, good qualifying run, and Rusty Wallace. Cars begin to pull out. Kenny Wallace and Ernie Irvin will be starting in row number four. And about in row five, there's Dale Jarrett, last week's winner, and Kenny Schrader. And in row six, we have Sterling Marlin, who's running good here, and Jeff Ludine, winner a couple of weeks ago at Watkins Clean. Back in row number seven will be Ricky Rudd and Joe Nemechek. Row eight, back in that 15th spot, Jimmy Spencer and Morgan Shepard. And row nine, we find Hutch Strickland and Jeff Burton, last week's pole. In the 10th row on the inside will be Brett Bodine alongside the 12-time winner here at Bristol, Darrell Waltrip. Ward Burton on the inside of row 11 and Bobby Labonte on the outside. And in row 12 is Dale Earnhardt and Dave Marcus. The 13th row consists of Dick Trickle and Lake Speed. Row 14, 27th, Gary Bradbury, 28th, Ted Musgrave. And in row 15, we have Johnny Benson, rookie driver, and Rick Mast. You can see the flash bulbs going off in the grandstand as the cars make their way around. There's the 16th row, Robert Presley and Wally Dallenbach, 17th row. Jim Sauter substituting for Kyle Petty. Then the provisional starters include Bobby Hamilton and Jeremy Mayfield. Back in the 19th row, a couple of more provisional starters, Derry Cope and Chad Little in the 29 Cartoon Car Network uh, tonight. And Bobby Hillen will be starting for Bill Elliott. In car cameras, on top of Rusty Wallace, Miller Genuine, uh, Miller Ford it is. On the outside of him, we find Michael Walter, the Sitgo Ford, a roof camera on that car. Jim Sauter will also have a roof cam. This is the uh, Coors light machine that Kyle Petty normally drives. Ken Schrader will also carry a roof cam in the Budweiser car. And finally, our fifth car to carry an onboard camera will be Mark Martin, the pole sitter. He looks back on the rest of the starting lineup. Let's take a look at our race analysis. We'll go 500 laps. The record was set by Charlie Klotz back way back in 1971. They'll have to pit between laps 140 and 150. And the total purse here tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway is $1.4 million. We've had some rain here. It rained quite hard about 2 o'clock. And again around 5 o'clock. It has not rained since about 5.30. The track is dry. The fans are here. We're set to go. And 500 laps of Bristol is one of the most exciting events you can ever see. Quickly to the pits and cherry punch. Hey, Bob, now the guessing game has begun. All down pit road behind me. Here is Jeff Gordon's pit. They won this race back in the spring. They won it spring a year ago. Terry Labonte won this race last August. But the guessing really has begun as exactly what the rain has done with the racetrack. Ordinarily, rain would tighten up the track. A lot of guys could be very, very tight and have a push when the green flag drops. Let's check in with Bill Weber. 
First race here at Bristol, July 1961. Jack Smith won it, but he needed relief help. There's another guy in this starting field that might be looking for relief help. That's Dale Earnhardt. Johnny Allen was the relief man back then. Will Mike Wallace be a relief man coming out of the bullpen and a hero tonight? We'll wait to see when the green flag falls to John Kernan. We'll be on back in Dale Earnhardt's pit, and Mike Wallace is standing here. He's talking to all the crew members, and he's probably the most anxious man who's not in a race car right now for this start because he knows that if he can get into that three car and come through with a good finish for the Richard Childers team, that that could do a lot to improve his stock for getting a full-time Winston Cup ride for next year. Will Earnhardt get out of the car? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see. Dale Earnhardt is set to go as the field comes along down through corner number four and on to the main straightaway once again. Tonight's field consists of 23 Fords, 11 Chevys, and five Pontiacs. Mark Martin is starting his fourth race in a row on the pole. And the 95 car of Gary Bradbury makes a pit stop along the back stretch, pulling out onto the uh, track once again. He'll be falling into the rear of the field. Bob, there were 40 cars that came here to attempt to qualify. 39 of them were starting. The only one that didn't, that failed to qualify was Bobby Hillen, and he only liked a thousandth of a second getting into the field. But he is in the field driving for Bill Elliott. Of course, it's in Bill Elliott's car. This is Thunder Valley. We're surrounded by mountains, and when the cars accelerate and the speeds begin to pick up, it is deafening. This place actually shakes. The field is ready, and we're ready for the goodies. Head encounter 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway. position here in the early going. Bobby Hamilton, Derek Cope, and Ted Musgrave finally get into single file formation. Now Cope coming up on the back of the Bobby Hamilton car. Mark Martin, who led the most laps last week at Michigan International Speedway. In fact, he led 135 of the 200, is the leader here. And Jeff Gordon is about two car lengths behind. And they pulled out to about a 15 car length lead over the third place car of Terry Labonte. See there the distance as they come off turn four. There's Dale Jarrett following his teammate Ernie Irvin. Sterling Marlin is right behind Dale Jarrett. Ricky Rudd is also. And you can see they're chasing Kenny Wallace in the 81 car. And our, our score pylon, you can see Kenny Wallace is the seventh place deal. Right in front of Kenny is Michael Waldrop and Rusty Wallace, who is running in fifth place, has opened up with a half of a turn. And here goes the lead. Mark, or rather, uh, Mark Martin is about to lose the lead to Jeff Gordon. Gordon pulled the pass, going into turn number one. And so Jeff Gordon, who has led now in his 17th race, is in the lead. Here is Derry Cope to the bottom of Jim Sauter and taking away that position for 29. And Ted Musgrave will come right along. Boy, once you get up out of that bottom green, other cars will follow right along. Already the field has circles about three quarters of this racetrack. We welcome you to Thunder Valley. Sit back and enjoy an evening of NASCAR Winston Cup racing here on ESPN. Jeff Gordon, your early leader over Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, 
Ricky Craven and Rusty Wallace. You told me we would never see well, Marlon. Great yeah, job, really. great job, Bill, on NASCAR today. Bill, I'm impressed. Very impressed. Great job. <laughs> Rusty going around. He looks like he's flying. Looks like yeah. Rusty is yeah, flying. He is. Earnhardt up to now. 17th, huh? Yeah. Actually, I guess he's 16th. Okay. Go, oh, Spencer spinning. He is turn one. Whoops. Johnny Come. Benson's going to get yeah. the worst of that game. Caution is out for the first time tonight here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Spin over in turn number two. Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race, and we have completed 20 circuits. Jimmy Spencer was the one who originally spun, but Johnny Benson, I think you'll agree, got the worst end of the deal. Here it is as they come off corner number four onto the main straightaway. Jeff go down the seven car, QBC car. They go in the corner. They make contact. Spencer tries to keep off the seven car. When he does, he spins. Now he nails the gas, does a 360. He's hard on the accelerator, but behind, Johnny Benson gets tapped by the 33 car. He ran in the back, looks like the 15 car. And we see Derek Coke stops, and the leaders did go by and lap those cars. Here we see Jeff Gordon. He goes high. Wally Dolan back. See the 95 car of Gary Bradbury. Jeff Gordon lapped him, but he did slow down and let Bradbury pass him before he got back to start finish line. So right now, every car except a couple of cars that uh, were involved in the accident are on the lead lap. Derek Cope and Johnny Benson both uh, went a lap down. Mike Wallace does not have his helmet on, so I think you could gather by that that there will be no driver change at this point. And there may never be tonight. That's one of the things, of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on. Dale Earnhardt is running 16th at the moment. Made a lot of progress. So our first caution is waving. We had 15 cautions last year in this race for a total of 106 laps. The record number of cautions here at Bristol occurred in the April race of 1989 when there were 20. There you see Robert Presley going back out onto the racetrack and we jump inside the car driven by Rusty Wallace and Wallace has moved up to fourth position. Rusty Wallace has a very, very fast race car tonight. A couple cars have made pit stops, Robert Presley and the Dick Trickle and now the green flag is waving. Trickle's still down on the bottom of the racetrack. He didn't catch up to the back. Trickle on the bottom, having trouble getting up to speed. So the last car between first and second, Terry Cope is between Gordon and Martin. Ever see Derek Cope trying to get underneath Jeff Gordon? Get a lap back, and he does it. Look at that. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. 
But isn't that a situation where Jeff would probably rather get it, let him get the lap back than argue with him this early in the race? I would think, yeah, because he knows that, that there's always that possibility of just a little bit of a tap, and it doesn't take much. You're almost out of control going around these turns anyway, and somebody tapped you just a little bit. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that that was a good uh, defensive move. Rusty Wallace has to be one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. He's now working on third place, Terry Labonte. Nope, not anymore. Wallace is in third. I was surprised that Johnny Benson did not come up to the head of the pack. He lost a lap in that spin over there, but he didn't come up there like Terry Cope did and try to get his lap back. He stayed back in the back of the pack. Wallace already gaining two positions here in the first 26 laps of the race. There's now fourth position of Terry Labonte. One lap down to the field. As we see Jimmy Spencer trying to get on the inside of Phil Nemechek. Yeah, does it? Robert Preston down on the inside. He came out of the pits and went to the back of the pack, but he is not running totally up to speed. He has lost a lap now. Jimmy Spencer did not lose a lap when he spun. Now we focus in on the battle of teammates, Irvin and Dale Jarrett. And Jarrett trying to take away the... See the 33 car high on the racetrack as all the other cars go by. We see the damage on the right front fender press this car. He did make contact. Looks like he has a flat tire. Certainly driving the car. John Kernan has a report, John. Well, Robert Presley was in. They worked on the right front. He is told the crew in. He did the crew the car had a bad vibration. Right now he is radioed in and told the crew that the car just does not want to turn. You can see it washed up high. So we would expect for Robert to make it an entrance on pit road here on the back foot for the show. Cranfield summary is showing you where everybody is running at this point. And Rusty Wallace now has caught second place, Mark Martin. And the best battle on the racetrack is for the second spot. Now, Jeff Gordon has caught Derek Cope again and has really been working on the last couple left. Derek can't move out to about a five or six car length lead over Gordon. He's in the lead lap right now, but Gordon looks in his mirror and sees Martin and Wallace coming, so he needs to try to get by Derek Cope. I think he's faster right now. And speaking of a fast race car, the number 90 car of Dick Strickle is keeping up with everybody. Now, he is a lap down in 37th position, but he is even putting heat on third place, Rusty Wallace. He's made up a straightaway just in the last couple of laps. I would guess that the 90 car on that pit stop when we saw him in the pit changed tires. I don't know that, but I would guess that he has fresher tires than some of these other cars. This is looking back from Rusty's bumper cam. And look at the close. And Nickel Trickle's going to try on the outside. He did it. Rusty just said, go ahead, Dick. You're faster than I am right now. He moved over. Let him go. I think Nick didn't realize that the, that the green flag was about to come out. He came out of the pit, and he just came slowly along down the front straightaway, and all of a sudden the green flag comes out, and the leaders are there beside him before he knew it. Well, Derry Cole is staying on the lead lap at the moment. He would certainly like to see a caution at this point so he can encircle the entire racetrack. He's trying. We saw the back end kick out as he came off the corner. He's trying his best to stay in front of that 24 car. 37 laps have been completed. Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, and Ricky Craven are the top five at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Goodies Headache Powder 500. front tire and like to knock the wall down. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. 
Jeff. Eleven and three, Mike. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. been in the piss. I guess he had a flat. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on ESPN Speed World from Bristol Motor Speedway. The goodies heading counter 500 being brought to you by McDonald's. On the track, in our restaurants, just watch us cook. By the more than 1,400 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto ports. By the all-new Ford Taurus, a look you've never seen from a name you know well. And by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Well, the leader's working on heavy traffic now here at Bristol at the completion of 48 laps. Here we see Johnny Benson. Right in front of our leader, Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, is the leader. There's that heavy traffic that Bob was talking about. Rusty Wallace has been up again by, back by Dick Trickle, also Derek Cope. There's first, Gordon. Second is Mark Martin. There's the third place car, Rusty Wallace. Benson has just gone two laps down. He's in 38th position. And we see the 29 car of Chad Little. Slow. The Cartoon Network car very, very slow off the corner. Letting everybody go around on the inside. Gordon puts a lap on Dave Marcus. 31 cars on the lead lap now as Gordon picks them off. And also put some daylight between himself and second place Mark Martin because of the traffic. There's yeah. third place Wallace. He got through that traffic uh, very, very good. Jeff Gordon did. That got him a little bit of breathing room. There we see the right rear quarter on the 95 car flap, and he and the 30 make some contact off four just a moment ago in front of the leader. And Bradbury in the 95 did a good job. And there's 41 of Ricky Gray, one of our dark horses. That have the chance tonight. You see him, he's in good spot. Here are Bobby Labonte and Dale Earnhardt racing for the 18th position. Earnhardt has lost a couple of spots in the recent laps, and now is another one. He goes back to 19th. Labonte goes by on the outside, so obviously Earnhardt decided to let him go. And now Ward Burton will try to pass Dale Earnhardt. moves over and tells Ward to go on the outside. He does. Lake Speed will try the same thing. That's a tough pass, but Earnhardt is giving them the room that they need up there. Behind Lake Speed is Daryl Waltrip. Obvious that Earnhardt is having a struggle here this evening. Let me let me tell you something. Charles Antler has had trouble <laughs> driving around this racetrack. Let's go to John Kernan. Well, Dale Earnhardt hasn't said much about the pain he's in, which I'm sure he's probably in a lot of pain out there. The only thing he has talked with crew chief David Smith about is the way the car is handled. Dale has said that the car is good, except that it's tight coming off. So they 
Bolts. They have talked about it. They will plan to make an air pressure adjustment on their first pit stop. But so far, Dale hasn't said anything about getting out of the car. Since the restart, since we went back to green flag racing after our first caution, look at the uh, Earnhardt serial. He was 16th on lap 23 and now has fallen back to 20th position and is fighting for that position. As Lake Speed is still trying to get around him. Meanwhile, back of that group, here is the leader, Jeff Gordon. And now Mark Martin has also maneuvered through the traffic and is caught back up to Jeff. Well, that, that traffic in front of Jeff Gordon, they're, they're going to scramble to try to stay on the lead lap. They see Gordon coming, and this is when you see trouble a lot of times as they start scrambling, trying to get by that car in front of them. As we continue to watch Earnhardt here. Darrell Walter comes up on him. There we see what Ned's talking about. We know that Bobby Hill and Jeremy Mayfield, Rick Master, are going to run as hard as they can to try and stay in front of Jeff Gordon. Jeff already trying to lap up to the 30th position where Hill is running at the moment, as you see there on the Fram Field summary. And now the cars that have lost at least one lap. And Robert Presley, who's been in and out of the pits, is now 15 laps in the rears. Well, this is tough for the leaders here. Those cars, good race cars, trying to stay in the lead lap. Just hoping to catch a caution. Don't want to be a part of it, though. never see Gordon going by the 94. As Presley goes back to pit road, I'm sorry, he didn't go to pit road. He just went down to the inside of the racetrack and let faster cars go by. Jeff Gordon has won two of the last three NASCAR Winston Cup races here at Bristol. Second and third now becomes close as Rusty comes up on Martin again. And Martin is going to have to maneuver through this traffic also. There are a couple of lap cars, three lap cars. Fourth place belongs to Terry Labonte. And staying up in fifth position and doing a great job here in the early going is Ricky Craven. Not too far behind him is Kenny Wallace in the 81 car. Michael Walker, that Kenny got by him. Michael's been able to stay right up with him. Ernie Urban has fallen. Rusty Wallace takes second for Mark Martin. Boy, in practice this afternoon, Rusty Wallace was very, very good. He still appears to be very, very good. <laughs> we have a spin. Jeff put on here on the front straightaway. And made no contact with the inside wall. You see, the car is right. What is that? The left front tire is flat. He was running 14th when the spin occurred in turn four, stopping here on the main straightaway. The second caution of the evening comes out at lap 72. Okay, hey, with 72 laps, uh, do they make pit stops? They're about halfway through a gas run. I expect they will. Yeah, they will. Here, here they come. come. All of those on the lead lap will have an opportunity to pit here as Jeff Gordon leads them down. Leading Rusty and Mark and Terry, Ricky and... Kenny, here's Jerry Punch. We would expect to see four tires changing. This is the first caution flag of the evening. Gordon getting right side tires right behind him. Terry Lamonti, teammate. And behind Lamonti will be the Rusty Wallace car. Right side tires already on. Gordon DuPont, Chevrolet. Let's go to Bill and Jerry's pit. More tire change for Dale Jarrett. They made a track bar adjustment. Right side's already on. The fuel is in, working on the left, waiting on the left front. Now they've got a problem. They've got a left up front on Dale Jarrett. John, it's a four-tire change for Dale Earnhardt, also taking the rubber out on the right rear. They swing around the left side, they made an adjustment on the wedge on the left rear. Earnhardt sitting in, waiting. He's on the back stretch. Hits. There goes Ward Burton. Contact. Oh, he hits the tire. David Pivot pushing it down. He reads the car, trying to get the tire off. He finally does as the tire slides up at the base of turn number three. 
Yeah, it's almost up in the concrete, but uh, remains on the asphalt. I wonder how much damage that could have done to the front end of his car, if any. I believe he's going to come back in and check it out because he's almost in the rear of the pack anyway. I think he'd be smart to do that. Or is he going to change drivers? Has Mike Wallace okay. got his helmet on? John, Earnhardt's coming back down pit road. Well, they want to make, check and make sure that there's no damage to the front end as I watch Dale pull in. It is bent back just a little bit. Now the crew will go to work and pull out the balance of the, the nose. And boy, oh boy, they're having a tough time doing that. Mike Wallace still has his headset on. He does not have his helmet on. Dale Earnhardt is down in a way that didn't look to me like it was too severe, just a little bit curled up underneath the nose. But track position is so important, and Dale Earnhardt does not have track position here as we're getting set to go back to the green flag. And here's why we are under caution. Jeff Bodine looping off of corner number four, maybe with some help by his brother Brett Bodine. In any case, Jeff spun flat in the left front tire, and that's why we are under caution after 74 of 500 laps at Crystal Motor Speedway. matter Lynn you'd act perplexed oh it got thrown out and they emptied our waste paper basket the www.nascar.com but I can do that don't worry about it Lynn don't worry about it Lynn don't worry about it and that requires a billboard I'll bet doesn't it here keep these Lynn What did Spencer do on the stop? Two tires, gas, or what? We're going to need uh, a light in here before too long. I can't see nothing. Thank you. Did Spencer just change two tires, gas, or what? He must have. Maybe only changed two tires. This would be a great place to mention that the rule will change next year for the champion. I wanted to do that, but we got the break. I'm sorry. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. Here's Jerry Punch. In this era of satellite communication with cellular phones and fax machines, we all realize how easy communication has gotten. Well, that is easy everywhere except Bristol Motor Speedway. Now, I hear the noise is such a huge factor, it's hard to even talk to someone standing beside you. That's why we all wear these noise-canceling headsets even among the crews. But sometimes when they're under green fly conditions, you can't even hear with these things on. So you need a little bit of legal assistance. Actually, what you need is a good old-fashioned legal pad. Take a look at what the crew members do. They have what they call a legal assistant right on the legal pad. Add two rounds of ice. Increase air pressure one pound on the right front. Gas and go. In case the driver doesn't hear you, well, you hold it up in the window. You say, I said go. Folks, you got to be simple when it's this noisy in Bristol, Tennessee. Even sometimes the headsets don't work. Bob? Back to the basics as far as communication is concerned. And you can imagine what the noise is like here. But the fans love it. This should be a great baseball game tomorrow night on ESPN. The two top teams in the National League Central. The Cardinals led by Ron Gant. In the Astrodome, taking on Jeff Bagwell in the division leading Houston Astros. 8 o'clock tomorrow night on ESPN. It's the Sunday night baseball game of the week. <laughs> well, let's take a look at a Fram Field summary here while we are under our second caution of the evening. Jeff Gordon is going to be at the front of the field when they turn him loose once again, but uh, that's not going to happen until another half lap. The field is being formed up in the two-by-two two formation. We saw now, Dale Jarrett have that problem in the pits with a lug nut. Now, last night, the slower cars lined up on the outside, did they not? But they do it in reverse in Bush. Okay. Yeah. And it seems like that uh, the faster cars would want themselves on the inside, but that's not the way it works. Yeah, they would want themselves there, but that's not the NASCAR rule. You can see Rusty really got caught out there, and Jeff Gordon is just ripped away. And once again, Dick Trickle is still working his way back up to the lead lap. Wow, Jeff.
Jeff Gordon put some distance on these cars. On Rusty Wallace, the second place car, he's number two in second place. The sixth car is in third place. Now Rusty, and we see John Andretti in the pits. He was in 23rd position. I'm told that Jeremy Mayfield, the RCA car, was black flag. drop down off the banking and head for his pit on the back stretch. And the word is that he passed the pace car, so that is a stop and go penalty. And even that is enough to lose yourself a lap in it. Oh yes. Here see Dale Jarrett, the 88, and Ricky Rudd, the 10, trying to get by Dolan. Back they do that. Dolan back in the 15. There's Jeff Burton in the 99, the inside car. Holly Dollar back is a lap down. It's Ward Burton at 22 that's going by him now. The MBNA and Bobby Labonte. Ward's in uh, the, the 18th position. Bobby Labonte is 19th. Musgrave 20th. like running a little better than he was. We're seeing more passing now than we did at the beginning of the race. They all got in single file when we started this race. But now they're getting in there and mixing it up a little. Remember when this track was asphalt as opposed to concrete? Well, it apparently is going back to asphalt. Bruce Smith, the owner of this facility, indicated in a news conference on Thursday a number of changes that would come about, and he said that it could be back to asphalt in as little as a month from now. And one of the incredible things that he mentioned during that news conference was that he was talking to a German firm and considering putting a dome over this place. Little contact there between Dollenbach and Hunt Strickland. Can you imagine the dome to Bristol Motor Speedway? That'd be neat. <laughs> $25 million Where? expenditure. John Kernan has a report on John Andretti. John Andretti's crew has pushed his car behind the wall, what we're being called a broken right rear axle. Andretti sitting behind the wall, of course, we're not expecting John to be back in the 37 car next year. We're expecting Jeremy Mayfield to take over this ride. John was really looking for a good run tonight, but it won't happen. They are behind the wall, and the crew going to work just to try and get him back out on the track as soon as they can. And Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race, now has caught up to this huge pack of uh, cars that he'll have to be maneuvering through. That's Robert Presley. Presley now goes 18 laps down. And about five more cars in front of Jeff. Well, Bobby Hamilton just made a little slip and lost about four positions. Gary Bradbury, the 95 car, and we see this just passing that one car, Bradbury, for one lap following him, has allowed Rusty Wallace to catch him. Rusty trying to lap Bradbury on the outside in turn number two. Ripped, ripped his bumper, bumper off. <laughs> How about that? Open it up like a can opener. Oh. Now Mark Martin trying to get by Presley and Bradbury. And Bradbury will come to the kiss. I'm sure he was black flag. The Todd was told that hey, you got something hanging out back there. You need to come in and get it off. He's got to put a piece of plexiglass, fiberglass. They knock it off and it's okay to go. That's it, go. <laughs> and you see, even that lost a lap for Bradbury. And Rusty Wallace now begins to challenge Jeff Gordon for the lead. Jeff Bedine and Jimmy Spencer got together coming off turn four. Almost had a spin, but it didn't happen. Took my breath for a minute. We're approaching the first 100 lap mark here at Bristol. And Jeff Gordon, the leader. However, Rusty Wallace is close in second.
And the 29 car of Chad Little has a flat left front. Look at the brakes. How hot the brake rotor was on that 29 car. Wow. So Little, who is pitted on the back stretch, will be going in to get that situation corrected. And it's not easy to steer these things with a flat left front. And Rusty Wallace has taken the lead at lap 100. An incredible short track racer is Rusty Wallace. In the last 31 short track races, he has an average finish of 3.97. Jimmy Spencer and Jeff Bodine are still going at it out there. Well, they've been doing a little bit of bumping here, short track racing, Bob. Both of them were very good at short track racing, but they've almost done at least twice. Well, Spencer is on the lead lap, and Jeff Bodine is two laps down. So this is not a battle for position, but... They are working on each other and bumping on each other quite a bit. You see, Spencer, I don't think Jimmy changed as many tires. He might have just changed two or no tires because he went from about 20 spot up to four. So he's probably having some trouble sliding up the racetrack because he just isn't getting the grip that the other fellows are that did change four tires on those last round pit stops. But he did get, and you're going to hear this phrase more than once tonight, good track position, and that's put him... In the fifth position, we understand that he took on two tires. Up front, Jeff Gordon begins to challenge now Rusty Wallace and try to move back to the front as Rusty puts a lap on the 94 car driven tonight by Bobby Hiller. 104 laps have been completed. It's Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, and Jimmy Spencer, the top five at Bristol Motor Speedway. Is that thing working? Yeah. Okay, good. Not a way, BP. He's heading Powder 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway. This happened just a few moments ago, and Pablo Picasso Parsons will go to the Telestrator here. We see Gary Bradbury's rear bumper right here. He's already had some damage to it in this area right here. He goes down in the corner. He goes down in the corner, and Rusty Wallace's left front is going to hit that. And when he backs off and the car goes forward, it just simply jerks the rear bumper off. As it comes off the corner, bam, there it goes. <laughs> it was already loose, and Rusty made slight contact with it, and away it goes. But Gary came in, and the crew ripped it off, and he's back out there. Only driver to lead at least one lap in all five short track races this year is Rusty Wallace, the leader of the race. A lot of traffic up ahead, however. Oh, Ooh. 
Dollenbach. Almost spun out. How in the world he kept that thing down with the flat and didn't spin? I don't know. Good job for it. Okay, did lose a lap, however, slips back to 25th position. And Rusty Wallace is still following Brett Bodine. Brett the load machine, number 11. Ted Musgrave, all these cars, once again, wanting desperately to stay in the lead lap. But there goes Rusty. He doesn't get the, the advantage that the leader gets as far as the attention of, of the flag. They say, okay, the leader's coming up and late five, but then if you run back there second or third fourth place, sometimes they don't move out of the way quite as easy to lose. There's the fifth place car of Jimmy Spencer, who got great track position on the first series of pit stops under caution. He started 15th and is currently up in the fifth position. He has risen from 21st to 13th in the point standings since Dover. Ricky Craven and Ernie Irvin at 6th and 7th. Dale Jarrett running 8th. And Michael Walker, the central car, running that Jeff Bodine. Makes some contact spun Lost a couple of laps. Dark horses for the evening, along with Ricky Craven and Kenny Wallace. Oh, we've got, not, we've got a Jim, crash. Jim Sauter and the 18 car of Bobby Labonte spun in unison down the back stretch, and we see Sauter has some pretty significant damage to the right front of his car. Third caution of the evening comes out on lap 129. And the purple front end of the Coors Light Pontiac. This is beautiful. Right in the ground. Yep. Well, Bobby Labonte stays in the lead lap. Earl Walker can jump on the lap down there. You can see that uh, advantage. Right front tire is also flat on the car. And now we see pit stops by those running up front. Those on the lead lap coming in. Here's Bill Weber. Jimmy Spencer is in. He's got the last pit stall on the front stretch. Two tires earlier. This is expected to be four. Big chassis adjustment on the left side. Now a wreck here outside of turn four under caution. Jerry punches in Jeff Gordon's pit. No chassis adjustment so far. Already they've changed right side tires. Now working on the left side. Gordon trying to beat Rusty Wallace under the pit. He's pitting two stalls in front of Rusty. Rusty is down the way. And Rusty will beat Gordon out of the pit. Let's go back to turn on the Dale Earnhardt still complaining that the car is tight in the center and off the turns. So it'll be a four-tire change. They've already made the chassis adjustment on the left rear. They've also made air pressure adjustments. And they're swinging around down to the left side as everybody who's pitted on the front stretch swings by. Earnhardt still sitting here. What that's going on? Waiting, waiting. Problem with the left rear. Getting the nuts on the left nuts. Falling off. Earnhardt's down and away. Yeah, he also had some kind of problem on the right front, John. I don't know exactly what it was. 
it, they might have been jerking a rubber out of the right front. It looked like they had a pair of snips over there to snip a wire that holds the rubber in the right front. And they were talking earlier about the car being tight, and that's one of the things that they would do to fix that. Here's why we're under caution. There you can see the contact by Jim Sauter on the inside backstretch wall, along with Bobby Labonte. Now, Bill Weber referred to a crash in turn four while the pit stops being made. That was Rick Mast. Mm, I wonder where that damage to the right front. Now, well, it sounded like he sounded like he had a flat. A, a tire went flat just before he started to spin. But he's still dragging metal around. Rick Mass did have contact with another car in turn four while the caution was out. Uh, minor damage to that car. We'll take another break and be back with more live coverage as Mike Wallace still awaits his shot in the Dale Earnhardt car. follow up on that mask. Yeah, they were talking about taking a rubber out, but they did not. I just asked David Smith. He said no. That They asked Dale if he wanted it out. He told him no. I asked him what the problem was on the right front. He said we didn't have a problem on the right front. Hmm, so okay. I didn't see it from where I was, but I was in the pit. I wasn't up. Last time I was standing on the toolbox. This time I couldn't get up there. I just saw him over there with a pair of pliers. Well, they... They were going to pull it out, Benny, but I guess Earnhardt changed his mind. At the last minute, okay. I just wanted to clear that up. Okay. We're glad you did, John. Thanks. Mike, we're keeping you up. What was that? <laughs> what? Mike Hagan, engine builder. Who? to have it near zero in here. I don't know if I jack it on. I'm burning up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's bad. That's <laughs> <stay high. laughs> the other two. The other two. Farm to help get ready to put your baby <laughs> turn winter time. Bristol Motor Speedway in the Northeast Mountains of Tennessee and the Goodies Headache Powder 500. We're under caution, our third of the evening. Here's the Napa Field summary showing you that uh, not a great deal of positions changed during the uh, pit stops. Terry Labonte moved up to third. Jimmy Spencer was back to sixth. Ernie Urban lost a couple of positions. He got boxed in, the car in front of him, and those when he was trying to come out, he, he couldn't get out because he was boxed in. It cost him a position or two. 19 cars are on the lead lap. Now 31 through 39, and Jerry is with Derek Cope behind the wall. Derek, a short evening so far. You look like you're just about whipped. What happened with the car? Well, uh, I think the rear end gear, uh, we had a problem with this, starting to burn the rear end gear up. But, uh, you know, uh, it's really a bad thing because, uh, you know, we had a good race car tonight. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I got lapped down. They're trying to avoid a, a wreck. They're trying to be too cautious. But, uh, you know, the Badcock Pilot Ford's running good. If we can get back out, we'll just, you know, just try to get some points. Derek, let me ask you, you're, you're in great physical shape, and you're about, look like you're about, about to give up here. How does a Dale Earnhardt stay on a track like this with, the, with broken bones? Well, I mean, you just got to get into a rhythm. You know, it's hot inside these cars, you know, and uh, I was working really hard trying to stay up in the thing, trying to get my lap back. But uh, if he, you know, he's so good, he just sits back in the seat and relaxes. So uh, he'll be fine. You watch. Hey, by the way, they're not going to give up. They're going to try to get this car fixed and get back out there. We'll let oh, you yeah. go. We got a lot of folks here from Pilot and uh, Badcock here, so we got to get back out there. Hey, best of luck to you, D.C. Derek Cope behind the wall trying to fix the rear end gearing in his Ford. Meanwhile, on lap 137, the green flag comes out. We are back to racing with Rusty Wallace at the head of the field with Jeff Gordon second, then Terry Lamont, Mark Martin, and Ricky Rudd. And Ricky Rudd was 13th, 13th before the caution flag changed two tires and gained that much track position. 
Well, we got more cars that are left down now than we had before on restart, so it's going to make it a lot more tedious for a lot of these guys trying to get around on that outside. You see Jimmy Spencer there in the 23 car. Now, this time he changed the four tires, but that last pit stop to get in that track position paid off so well for him because right now he is up in the thick of the battle. And he just passed Ted Musgrave on the outside of the track. Now, Terry Labonte goes to the inside of Bobby Hillen, but Hillen is not on the same lap. Ricky Craven trying to also get around Ted Musgrave on the outside. There's third place, Terry Labonte, the points leader, coming into this race. Those guys who are down on the inside being left really have to let off going into the turns. They, there's a lot of gear on a track like this and, and let those cars go by on the outside. Everybody's doing a great job. Good bumper, uh, bumper cam a shot from Rusty Wallace looking back to Jeff Gordon. See, one thing, if Rusty can see the camera right now, he'd be scared to death. <laughs> I mean, Jeff Gordon is really working on the back bumper of that Miller Ford. Jimmy Spencer just went around Ricky Rudd. Took over the fifth position. Jeff Gordon, who we're looking at, is the best short track racer, at least in the first half of the 1996 short track season. Had finishes of first, first, second, and third, not in that particular order, but certainly is the man who accumulated the most points during the short track season. You see Terry Labonte in the five car is creeping closer and closer to the front two cars. He is getting going. He hasn't played yet tonight, and so he hasn't got that five bonus points. We've had three leaders, Gordon Wallace and Mark Martin. Mark led the first nine laps. Then Jeff took over. Rusty right now has led 46. Michael Walton, Zitko car. He's running 10. And now from Kenny Schrader's root camp. Trying to work to the inside of Ward Burton. This is the battle for 14th position. Schrader has it. 14, 15, 16 right there, and 17. We reported, I think, that Dale Earnhardt had taken a rubber out of the right front. Well, on a commercial break, John Kernan, what did exactly they, did they do to the three cars? It was basically a wedge adjustment in the left rear, four tire change, and an air pressure adjustment on both the right and the left side tires. At the last moment, Dale changed his mind. You alertly pick up that the, one of the crewmen had a pair of pliers. They weren't planning on taking up the rubber in the right front, but Dale changed his mind at the last minute. But right now, it looks like that air pressure adjustment, wedge adjustment, has turned the trick to turn on. It's really good out there. Yeah, he does. He's up to 12th place and uh, running much better than he was before the pit stop. That's the highest he's been all night, isn't it? Ricky Craven, Dale Jarrett, and Ernie Irvin are also in a good battle here. 7th, 8th, and 9th. Next week, when we go to Darlington, South Carolina, Dale Jarrett will be eligible for $1 million if he wins the race and takes home the Winston Million. Hasn't been done since 85. Wow. Pressure, huh? Million bucks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they went down there and tested the wrong HD did with the AJ car this week. Tested for three days. Get ready for it. We got a party, Ned, if he wins a million? Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't get any of it. <laughs> season, and then he goes to Talladega, is involved in that terrible, terrible crash, and has had trouble getting back on track since then, but looks like he is well on his way. As a matter of fact, Benny, before the crash, his average finish was 9.5. Since the crash at Talladega, his average finish has been 25.3. I didn't know that, man, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> and Ernie Crashman and Dale can't quite make it. Right now, Craven seems to be holding up both Jarrett and 28 car for Ernie Irvin. And once again, this is what I was talking about at the very top of the show. Patience, patience, patience. Although you've been out there for what seems to be an eternity, we still have 344 laps to go in this race, and you just cannot be too fast doing something that, you know, may cost you. Let's see if we find our leader. There he is, Rusty Wallace, and he's put about 15, 20 car lengths on Jeff Gordon. So Rusty Wallace continues the lead here with 157 of the 500 laps completed during that goodies headache powder 500. <laughs> Bill, he just ran a lot higher than any of the rest of them. I think he can win the race running that line. You know, he he obviously would be able to work traffic a lot better than some of the rest of them. Who? Spencer. Oh. Get them down in one and two then. Yeah. That's his line. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad line, really. Rusty Wallace in the Miller Ford Car 2 leads the Goodies Headache Powder 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway. As we are 165 laps in, there's second place Jeff Gordon as Rusty passes the number eight car of Hutt Sprinklin and puts him two laps down. Make that three laps down. Now. There he is, 28 laps down. We mentioned earlier that he got in a little entangled, just uh, got a caution flag there a little while ago. Jerry Punch has a report on Rusty Wallace. Guys, Robin Pemberton keeps telling his driver, Rusty Wallace, Rusty saves the tires. Remember, nice and smooth rhythm, rhythm, and we got problems in turn one. Big crash. Sterling Marlin. Folks, players. Jeff Burton all involved, everybody else moving away. Looks like Jeff Burton may be the worst hurt, although Marlon and Nemechek are still sitting there. Jeff Bodine was involved, Bobby Labonte, I don't know if he hit anything, but he, he broke away. The rear, left rear, he pushed the fuel cell up to the windshield. That's Lynn Bodine, the spotter for Nemechek. Are we driving it around? And four. Jeff Bice, the Okay, guys, let's be ready here. They need a damn frame machine. Son of a bitch. Need a frame machine. I'm sorry about that, that man. I, had, I don't know what the hell happened to him. All right, let's take a look at the replays. That was coming off turn four. Yeah, and uh, Nemechek was coming up a little bit. Michael Walter had a run on him coming off of there and touched him just a little bit. And Michael gets by on the inside, but the others didn't. The leaders are in. Here's Jerry. Well, they pitted just 40 laps to go in lap 129, but new tires are that critical here at Bristol Motor Speedway. So all four will get all four fresh tires. You see Rusty Wallace.
Thomas in, Jeff Gordon in, Terry Labonte. All the cars in the lead lap. Jimmy Spencer comes flying down the road. Here is Mark Martin already down and away. And the left side tire is now going on the 24 car. And Rusty is out. He made a four tire change. And now a little bit of problem with the left rear with the 24 car. The 23 car is already going through the five car in two. And now finally, 24 cars away. Earnhardt is in and John Curtis is there. It's a four tire change. You see the crewman working on the grill on Dale Earnhardt's car. The water temperature up to 230 degrees. Remember, the first pit stop, he took that tire off, ran into it, bent the grill back a little bit. Maybe it's upset the airflow just a little bit. They're making sure they get the grill as clean as they can to finish their work. And Earnhardt is away. Meanwhile, Ward Burton getting a four tire change. One lives go on, and he heads down pit road. Terry Labonte had to back out, uh, back up because of all the congestion to get out of his pit. Here's a replay of that. We see he can't, he knows he can't go forward when he puts it in reverse. He, now he had to stop for just a second. That allowed Jeff Gordon to get out in front of him. And Ernie Ir Ir Irvin had to do exactly the same thing, so he lost a couple of positions, same as he did a while ago. Jimmy Spencer was the first to complete his pit stop. He only took on right side tires at the top of your screen coming out. He's coming out of the pits as Michael Waltrip is coming in the pits, and also Kenny Wallace. Michael Waltrip and, and Mark Martin almost got together, and I think the 21 cars only changed his right side tires as well. And so Jimmy Spencer is going to be the leader of the race when we go back to competition. It's his first lead since Richmond earlier this year. Use this telestrator for Earnhardt's nose if we had that. If we, if we had a tape of, uh, if we were taping that pit stop. I don't think he's paying attention to you, BP. Yes, no. <laughs> we could telestrate that Earnhardt's nose if that pit stop was in uh, tape somewhere. You know, we could use a telestrator and point out the, the two spots that is that's re that's causing the air. The water temperature to rise in the car. Uh oh. 25 car got a little down. Well, how'd that happen? I guess he was in that wreck down there. Was he? Okay. Lead to the uh, highlights last week. Where'd this guy go, Lynn? Where'd this guy go? I, these numbers are changing, so apparently that's being done from somewhere else. of the evening here at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Goodies Headache Powder 500. A radical change here on the half mile from where we were last week. Two miles of Michigan International Speedway. Let's go back to last Sunday and take a look at the highlights.
Jarrett picking up his eighth career NASCAR Winston Cup win at Michigan last week. Jerry punches with Joe Nemechek. Joe, a wild one up there. What happened? How did it start? Well, uh, Michael, Michael was trying to get by me, and if he could have waited another straightaway, I would have let him go. Uh, just got a little impatient there, but hey, the Burger King crew, we've been trying hard this year. We've had some good runs going. It's unfortunate this happens, but uh, uh, we got the frame machine. We're going to get her fixed. Hey, they do have a frame machine right behind the Chevrolet. If they go, they're going to bring it out here and try to fix this car. Gallant effort going on by Joe Nemechek and the Burger King crew. Green flag come back, comes back out, and Jimmy Spencer is the leader of the race. Let's show you the AutoZone off-track interval results. Comparing and Rusty Wallace and Jimmy Spencer. And Rusty Wallace and Lila Spent 31 set, 10 seconds, and Jimmy Spencer 22.3. Jimmy Spencer changed two times. Rusty changed four. See how that related to track position because Spencer is the leader of the race. Rusty Wallace went to third, Gordon back to fourth, Labonte fifth, Martin moved up two, and Spencer moved up four. The Mark Martin's already lost those two spots back to, well, actually, I guess he's running fifth right now. 21 car Michael Walker is sixth. There we see Spencer, two lap cars, and Rusty, another lap car, and the Hendrick cars, Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte. Bill Weber is with Jeff Bodine. Well, this QBC Ford is a mess behind him, Jeff. What happened? Well, I wish I knew. I got behind, got turned around on the front straightaway. Uh, didn't dip over the racing here. Slow, fast, tight. Got bumped, turned around. Once you get behind here, you're in trouble. Just stay out of trouble. I uh, letting the lead cars go by. Just kind of follow them. And we made some adjustments. The car was really, really good. I mean, it was awesome. And I was just riding. And I'm not sure what happened going to turn one. My spotter yelled, but it's way too late, of course. It happened so quick. I slowed up. I missed the guy in front of me until the guy behind me hit me. Not me and him. I hit the wall really hard. I don't know if they can fix it. Maybe we can. We can up and get some points. But, uh... I'm okay. I'm on dad. Uh, sorry we didn't do better tonight. That is a typical experience at Bristol. Sterling Marlin was involved in the crash. He lost the lap. He's back in 23rd. Jeff Burton behind the wall. Kenny Schrader also has some nose damage. He, however, remained on the lead lap. See, Rusty Wallace got under the nine car of Lake Speed. Got Lake out of the groove. We see all these cars going by Lake still losing positions. He's one lap down in 19th position. And Jimmy Spencer running a totally different line around the racetrack. And if the two-car Rusty Wallace will see how that, look how high that Jimmy Spencer is running and how low that Rusty Wallace is running. Now Wallace moving to the inside of Ted Musgrave and Musgrave giving him a line. Now we are on board Rusty Wallace's car and you can see the difference in the lines that are being used as Spencer will go all, almost all the way to the top of the racetrack while Rusty stays right on that yellow line. You have Spencer's being the corner which is, uh, if you got a race car that worked that way you can free it up and really get it shot down off the turn. Sometimes it can help get traffic as well. But Rusty Wallace is catching him, so Rusty's line is working better for him. Definitely catching him. But Rusty Wallace changed four tires. Jimmy Spencer only changed two. Although Rusty is going a much shorter distance around this racetrack than is Jimmy Spencer. It's just a matter of time until Rusty takes the lead here. He's going to do it this lap, I believe. They cross the line, and Spencer with a nose advantage. However, as they go into one, Rusty does regain the lead again. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon, the third-place car, is right now hung up behind the 98 of Jeremy Mayfield. There we see Jeremy. There's third, fourth, and fifth. Gordon, Labonte. Mark Martin. Our Napa Field summary shows you, where, shows you where everyone is running, and the parenthesis numbers indicate where they started. You see, there's 17 cars on the lead lap. Mark Martin getting around Jeremy Mayfield. 
the air through there now. back of them, but this is the best one. It's Spencer, Jeff Gordon, and Terry Labonte, second, third, and fourth. Oh, Spencer wiggled a little there in the second turn, and Jeff didn't take advantage. Keeps the pressure on. Spencer now has moved down a little bit, and it looks like going into the turns there, sort of protect that position. Mark Martin is keeping a safe distance behind those three guys. That's a good uh, idea. Yeah. And then these three are catching some slower cars now, coming up on Presley and Mast and others. There's Mark Martin running all by himself back in fifth. Have some patience here. And they do. Mark Martin now catches up to second, third, and fourth. They have to slow because of the traffic. We see the top ten cars on the left side of the screen there, scoring pile on. Neil Earnhardt right now in three car. Morgan Shepard is 11 to 75 and 12 to 10. He's just away second. second. Yep, he's left his spot. Rick Mast there running without a foot on the car. Mast announced here that he's going to be driving for the Butch Mock team in 1997, the 75 Remington car. So that part of the silly season is over. We know where Rick Mast is going to go for next year. And as a matter of fact, Richard Jackson, the one car, is you know, Hooters has not told them they're coming back, so they're actually seek, seeking out a sponsor right now. Dale Earnhardt in the wall. He's slow up to three and four, is Earnhardt. Losing position. 
positions, he's made some contact yeah. with the right rear. I think the right front's pushed him a little bit too, Benny. Looks like this one. We can see where the fender is rubbing the tire. Saw some smoke down in the corner. So Dale Earnhardt is in positions here. Everybody going around him. The well, car off pace. That looks like the right front is maybe a little bit of damage there, but this is, could be costly for him in the point situation. He's about to get lapped by Rick, uh, Rusty Wallace, who's coming in quickly. Bernhardt has fallen back to 17th, the last car on the lead lap, and now he goes a lap down. Well, he had to ride careful there for a few laps. Check to see if the tire was rubbing the fender. So he lost five spots. Was 12, now he's 17th, and more importantly, he is a lap down. Now Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Spencer also pass by Dale Earnhardt. 215 laps are completed here at Bristol Motor Speedway. We'll take a break and be right back with more. Stay with us. You got it? You got it. What's that guy's name? Tom Wargo. Wargo. Tom Wargo. Thank you. Continues to lead to Goody's Headache Counter 500. And tune in tomorrow for ESPN's continuing coverage of the Bank of Boston Senior Classic. That's at 2.30 Eastern Time tomorrow afternoon. Tom Wargo is at the front of the field in that one, BP. And Ray Floyd not far back, is he? That's right. He's in second position. So you can see how it all turns out tomorrow at 2.30. Now, Dale Earnhardt and Lake Speed got together a few laps ago, and it's resulted in some damage to Dale Earnhardt's car. John Kernan. Well, Bob, the crew doesn't seem to think that the damage is too severe. You saw Earnhardt slow down. That was a precautionary measure to make sure that there wasn't a tire that was cut that might go down and send him into the wall. So they went around a few laps at slower speed just to make sure the spotter checked everything around and said, no, there's no tire rub. And David Smith, Bobby Hutchins, Dale questions about the car and what it was doing and how it was reacting and it, he answered everything positively so apparently no serious damage to the three cars. From Kenny Schrader's onboard camera we can get an idea of what happened between these two guys Lake Speed and Dale Earnhardt that resulted in all of this and we'll get to it in just a moment. They continue to run wheel to wheel out there and now Lake Speed and Bobby Hamilton go to the inside. Now let's take a look at what happened from Schrader's perspective. You see Lake Speed. Oh, there's the contact. Bernhardt comes off the wall, keeps the car going in a straight line, but we can see the concrete dust on both the right front and the right rear. There he is now, he's caught on the outside. All the, all the way back to 23rd now, Benny. And you see Derek Cope, and there comes the leader, Rusty Wallace, about to put Dale Earnhardt down the second lap. Brent Bodine and Kenny 
Shane Schrader. Schrader's on the lead lap at 13th. Brett Bodine has a lap down at 19th. There's a damage on Ken Schrader's car, and that happened uh, in that multi-car tangle down here in turn one. That also involves Sterling Marlin and Jim Burton and others. There is Sterling Marlin, and his car was damaged also in that incident. There you can see the damage on the left rear, and Rusty trying to put him another lap down. That would make him two laps down. He lost two laps, and he's fine. Get that uh, got him involved in that way. fifth in the first half of the 1996 short track season for four races. He finished second here in 1991 in this race. We are approaching the halfway point. Just 17 more laps now remain until the halfway point. Marlin came into this race ninth in the points. He was second in the points at this time last year. Dropping back now. Watching the field come through the break. Once again is the leader, Rusty Wallace. Check on Dale Jarrett and how he's doing. He's in fifth spot. Yeah, he's passed a lot of race cars since the uh, caution. You know, I had forgotten, but Dale led the most laps in this race last year. The race of Terry Levine. Yep. I haven't done that as well, but you see, he's moving away from Mark Martin. But remember, Mark Martin only changed two tires on that last pit stop. Went to get track position and. Seems to be struggling on the racetrack right now, but meanwhile, Jared is a struggle. Started ninth, currently in fifth spot after 236 laps. That's since the restart, oh, since our most recent caution yet. So Dale Jarrett has finished in the top five only nine times on a short track. He almost won the race last night, the Bush Grand National race that Jeff Fuller won. But Dale made a last-ditch, bold, brilliant move down in turn number three. He could have taken out Fuller, but he didn't. He finished second. John Curran has Fuller. Sorry, Bill Weber. Yeah, Bob, I, I just wanted to, you know, I was thinking earlier, remember Dale Jarrett had a pretty good qualifying run here for this race in the spring, but lost the ending his car after he took the checkered flag he put it in the wall at the end of the pit stretch they had to go to a back of car he started at the back of the field and as we were talking about in typical dj fashion marched his way right back to the front and finished sixth this time he qualified ninth sort of a lot closer to the front and is showcasing some of his short track abilities here again tonight jared running in fifth position Certainly been a surprise to me, Bob. Of course, like most of these drivers, got his start on the short track. You think that they're that they're first and second in a couple of short tracks, but that has not been the case with him. There are 257 laps to go, so it's a Heinz 57 field summary for you. Ricky Craven ran in the top five for quite a while. He's back in 10th spot, but still hanging on. Rusty Wallace and Miller Ford. Again, the numbers in parentheses are the positions that they started. 15 cars on the lead lap. Earnhardt started 23rd and is running 23rd. Two laps down. Wallace has won five times at 
this racetrack. And there's one of the crew members saying, hi, Graham, love you. Back in just a moment with more from Bristol Motor Speedway. Thank you, Chevy. I started to say it a little bit ago. That was Jeff Clark, Shauna Robinson's husband. Hold up that sign. Calm down. Don't be moving around so much. I'll have to keep that in my briefcase. Stay calm. <laughs> uh, I hope so. Well, I can have mine. Have it traffic behind his brother. Next car to go. Is he eligible? I guess he is then. Who, Rusty? Yeah. Yeah. Coming up, huh? The Goodies Headache Powders 500 on ESPN Speed World. And it's being brought to you by... Quaker State, the motor oil that exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. By AC Delco Automotive Parts. AC Delco, it's like buying time. And by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. We have reached the halfway point. In fact, we are four laps past the halfway point, and Rusty Wallace is still at the front. That means he picked up that $10,000 award from Gatorade to Jim, the halfway point. Jim Sauter showing a little bit of damage there in the 42 car in relief for Kyle Petty. The whole front end, as a matter of fact, is missing. He's back in 35th position, 55 laps down. Let's take a look at the top five in points and where they are running in this race. Terry Labonte is now fourth after starting third. Jeff Gordon is staying in second. Dale Earnhardt started 23rd, has dropped to 24th. Dale Jarrett from 9th to 5th, and Mark Martin from the pole to 6th position. There are your 3rd, 4th, and 5th place guard. Jimmy Spencer in 3rd, Terry Labonte is 4th, Dale Jarrett is 5th, and heavy traffic. That's Chad Little in the 29 car. Bobby Hillen in the 94 car. Schrader also just went a lap down in 14th position, so now just 13 cars remain on the lead lap. Yeah, while we're on the break, uh, Rusty Wallace put a lap on his younger brother, Kenny Wallace. Kenny's running in 15th position. So now just 13 cars on the lead lap. And Jimmy Spencer is using great pitch strategy. Changed two tires earlier on. Then he changed the next stop. This stop only changed two tires. And he's hanging in there running good race cars. Still in third place. Spencer has only one finish lower than 12th in the last four races. So this team and driver have really come on here in the recent events. They're about three and a tenth seconds behind. They were up to five seconds behind. They were resting on all that heavy traffic, and uh, they caught up to him. And this time, the others back there got through the traffic and the rest of it. Lavani and Jared trying to get around Jimmy Spencer. He opens the door there in the second turn, and Lavani takes advantage. And now Dale Jarrett tries, and he will in the third turn. Spencer makes the third to fifth on that lap. Forty-two car of Jim Sauter, third bumper. Dale Jarrett takes up the back end a little bit. He comes off the corner. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Johnny Vince going to the pits on the back stretch. I don't think we mentioned that Derek Cope is back in the race after spending about 39 laps in the uh, in the pit area behind the wall. Well, 
off the short track, and I think you could label this as a short car. It has no hood on it. You see the air cleaner that sealed the thing right in the center of the, of the air filter. Brett Bodine and Ricky Craven. Craven is on the lead lap, 12th position. Brett is not on the lead lap. He's a lap down in 20th. Jim Nemechek said he had a frame machine working on his car. Well, he doesn't fix it because he just put it back on the racetrack a couple of laps ago. Bill Weber has a report on Ricky Craven. Yeah, the handle on that 41 Chevrolet has really gone away. They were very optimistic at the start of the race. Now it's been the 28 car goes around. Cost of this out. It's Ernie Irvin who has fought up in turn number four. Rick Mass was involved in his second accident of the evening. There goes the Hooters Ford limping to the pits. And we can see the radiator is laid back on the engine. It's broken. All the water's going out of the car. Debris flying off the Hooters Pontiac. Not a good scene for Rick Mass. Major problems. Sure. And Ernie Irvin also going very slowly yeah. down on the main straightaway. The here. left rear of that uh, Haviland Ford and the left side, I think the left front tire is flat on it and the left rear quarter panel is really bashed in on it. He was running in 11th position when that happened and now we see the pit stops occurring as Ernie takes the car behind the wall. Here's Bill Weber. Jimmy Spencer is in. Again, he's got the full first stall on pit road right out of turn four. Right side tires, lots of fuel. Cleaning the windshield. It'll be a four-tire change for Spencer. This is a big break for Ricky Craven. Rusty Wallace is also on pit road. Jerry Pond. Rusty last pitted 100 laps ago, lap 169. They've already changed right side tires. They have trouble getting fuel in the car. Second chance of fuel now in the car. Gordon getting that up. Rusty off the deck. He speeds away. Dale Jarrett beats Rusty Wallace. Then Gordon. Let's go in the back pit. Ward Burton has moved his way into the top ten with his steady run tonight. He's now in the middle of a four-tire change. So far, no chassis adjustment. He will swing around to the left side. Jack goes up. The gas is full. Tires come off. Back on now. They get it lined up. And there goes the air gun. Ward runs the engine and takes off. And Ward is away. Dale Earnhardt is in and he has also had a problem with the toe in we have now that's why he's been running a lot slower laps so they went ahead and pitted because the penalty was tail end of the longest line well now they're going to lose another lap on pit road but they're going to go ahead and fix the toe in guys here's a replay of the crash involving ernie irvin also chad little was involved and dick trickle was involved also. Dick Turner slowed down. It looked like Rick Mass came in there and uh, and hit him. That's how he got involved. The 29 car looked like he had spun around and had anything and, and uh, Mass right in the back of the 29. But how Ernie spun, I don't know. It's our fifth caution period of the evening. It comes with 270 laps completed. Boys turned in a good pit stop on that 88 that time. I'm telling you, they changed four tires? Yeah. Great stop. Hey, they're working on the toe in right front on Earnhardt's car. And also, I thought I noticed this whenever he was driving out there. The left rear just didn't look right. I'm not sure if it got moved over when he made contact with the wall. But it, it's not rubbing, but it just doesn't look like it should. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's knocked out. Yeah. It just knocked over. It's, yeah. not, it's not knocked over a whole lot, but, I mean, it's just a little off skew. Is Mike Wallace not going to get in the car, John? No, Mike Wallace is still sitting up on the toolbox, got the headset on. Earnhardt's sitting in there and just wiping this. his face right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think you can do that. <laughs>
Shots, of course, were last year's finish when Terry Labonte slid across the start finish line sideways and won the race. The music from Lonnie Hillard, who has a great racing CD out. Well, another guy who could have won that, Ernie Irvin. He's with Jerry Bunch. And Ernie, you climbed down the Texaco Ford. Uh, what happened out there? Well, um, you know, the lap cars are, you know, they're trying to make as many laps as they can. And uh, Chad Little got into me on the way off of turn two. And I went to go by him going into three. And, um... I guess I didn't give him enough room. How bad is the car hurt, Ern? Well, it's pretty bad, but we're going to try to get it fixed. Ernie Urban was running in 11th spot. He is currently 7th in the point standings. Let's check it over with John Turner. Well, Jerry, Dale Earnhardt fired the engine, and now he sits here on pit road. What they've had to do is replace the fan on the radiator, the electric fan, to help blow some air through there to pull it down. They're now filling up the radiator with water. They've adjusted the toe on that right front, and they've also now they're checking the toe on the left side tires because they were under the car down around the track bar doing some work trying to get the rear end fixed because when you had contact with the wall, it slightly moved the rear end over, and that would make this car a handful to handle. But they've sat here on pit road trying to get everything fixed. You now see the fan coming out that they will get on as they still continue to put water into Earnhardt's radiator. Unbelievable. The, the fitting they use to put water in radiator with is leaking. <laughs> and to replace that, see? Yeah. The little deal is just a, a valve, and it's leaking. I had that happen to me in Michigan one time. And the only thing I can do is just take it off. Look at it. It's not going to be a good finish for Dale Earnhardt. He's right now in 28th and still sitting there as the green flag comes out. The leader of the race is Dale Jarrett. Now, if points were awarded right now, Dale Earnhardt would slip to fourth in the point standings, and Dale Jarrett would be in second, 117 points behind Terry Labonte. How about that? There would be the top five if points were awarded right now. I think we better give a great call to the Dale Jarrett pit crew. Todd Perry, those guys, a great, great pit stop. Yeah, they did. It was under 19 seconds. Second, closely pursued by Rusty Wallace, who has led the most laps here tonight. He's led 149 laps so far. Gordon has led 90, Spencer 21, Jarrett 10, and Martin 9. Dale Earnhardt is still on pit road. Still in the car, though. Not seeking relief from Mike Wallace. That's you think that, because I really felt like that would be a perfect time for Earnhardt to step out of that good picture and let Mike Wallace finish it. Well, looks like there's some conversation going on in the uh, Robert Yates area. Everybody huddled together down there. Now Jeff Gordon is really putting the pressure on Jared. He has moved right up on his bumper. Rusty Wallace is coming there as well. Earnhardt goes back in the race. are getting black flag for passing on the wrong side coming back to green. Boy, these first three cars are just like they're tied with a string, huh? Yeah, I think Jeff Gordon maybe is a little bit faster than Dale Jarrett, but that doesn't always mean you get by. It looks like Rusty Wallace is going to get by Gordon. Yes, he did. Rusty takes second. Now 
Terry Labonte closes in on Jeff. Boy, Rusty Wallace has a great, great race car tonight. He really does. Terry Labonte, when he won the championship in 1984, only won two races that year. And this race was one of them. Rusty putting the pressure on. Jared now may be ready to make a move. Nope. Jared protects the position. Uh oh, just a little bit loose. That might give Rusty the opportunity. Here he dives alongside. Yep, takes his spot away. Now Jeff Gordon will try to come along too, and he will. Let's see if Labonte will put Jared back to fourth. He does. First to fourth. Just have a lap. Just that quickly. Here's a little bit of a slip. Got the car just a little bit loose and allowed the car to get under. Guys like that are a huge disadvantage because of uh, either way. They'll see Jimmy Spencer right there, high on the racetrack. But I think that a little guy goes, goes by. Yeah, a little guy goes by. <laughs> I think that's 70 or 80 pounds that he picks up, or 100. They help. They're going to weigh the drivers a couple of times during the year and adjust the weight of the car accordingly. The other significant rule change involves the previous champion getting to pick first a pit selection that will not happen beginning in 97. Up to now, the champion. Regardless of where he qualifies in a particular race track, always gets first pick on the pit. That rule is abolished for 97. Also, all engines will be 14 and 1 compression ratio, the same as they are in Daytona. And the restricted play races, they'll have to run the 14 and 1 here at Bristol, Michigan, all the other race tracks. Maybe you ought to think about coming back now. You get that, that I have big, big back there, that weight set you up. I'd have a big advantage yeah. <laughs> But the cars are still going to have to weigh 3,400 right. pounds. They're going to adjust the weight after that. Right. Just a little more than 200 laps to go here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Wallace, Gordon, Labonte, Jeremy, and Martin are your top five. We'll be right back. We need to, to say on that rule yeah. that, for instance, Jimmy Spencer's car will weigh 3,400 pounds. Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon's car will probably have to weigh a little bit more than that. that that's, that's the way I understand the rule. Right, Bill Weber? Hey, Bill. Well, the way I understand it yeah, is Yeah, I can hear Benny. Hi, hey, Benny. Hey, Bill. Yes. On the, on the rule. What? Jimmy, on the weight room, Jimmy Spencer's car will have to weigh 3,400 pounds, right? Right. And, and the other cars will have to weigh a little bit more than that. Right, exactly. So if Mark Martin weighs 150 pounds, he may have to add 50 pounds. The weight's going to start at 200 pounds. I got you. That's as
as of now, they're going to, I guess they're going to weigh the guys and average it out. Rudd has a bad set of tires, and Todd Perrin injured his knee getting off the toolbox during an earlier pit stop. He's still here, but he doesn't feel so good. Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway. Dick Trickle, who was running in 23rd position, has entered the backstretch pits. The tire rubbing on the, looks like the on, right rear of the car. Yeah, it looks like he's had some damage of some contact or something back to the right rear. He made a pit stop a few laps ago. We see Johnny Benson are taking the air cleaner off. Looks like they're going to work on the car break. Dale Jarrett just passed the five car of Labonte and picked up third position. It's still Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon first and second. Now it's Jarrett Labonte running back in fifth is Mark Martin. And here is the Budweiser race recap. Rusty Wallace leading 167 of the first 305 laps. Six lead changes, five caution periods. Total of 36 laps and the average speed is 93 and a half miles an hour. Those are the drivers who have picked up the five bonus points for the a lap, and nobody is officially listed as out of the race. Some cars that have been in for a long time include Joe Nemechek, 101 laps down, Jeff Burton, 140 laps down, and Jeff Bodine, 141 laps down. As a matter of fact, the 99 car, Jeff Burton just came home back on the race track a few moments ago. Once again, Dick Trickle is in the pits on the back, so evidently uh, they have something up wrong they can't quite figure out. Rusty Wallace, our leader, has five top five finishes in the last seven races here at Bristol. Meanwhile, Jeff Gordon trying to sweep both races in a year for the first time since Dale Earnhardt did it back in 1987. There's Mark Martin, who's fifth place. Only driver eligible for the uh, Unical bonus money, which amounts to $68,400 this year. Wow. There is the 23 car of Jimmy Spencer. He's running in fifth place. Make that sixth, sixth place. place. Yeah. yeah, I misled you there. <laughs> sixth place. Ward Burns next in seventh. There he is in BNA Pontiac. Ricky Rudd, Bill Weber told us on the break, is struggling. He's back in seventh, eighth spot, but struggling with a set of tires that just isn't matching up right now. But there he goes. Tad Rye. Now we wait on the 21 car of Michael Waltrip, who is in ninth position. Incredibly, the Wood Brothers have never won here at Bristol in all the years they've been racing. now that is Ricky Craven but right there with him is Bobby Hamilton and I think Craven's about to lose that 10th spot yes he is Bobby Hamilton the 43 car will get on the byline and will complete the cars on the lead lap there's the last one Bobby Labonte as well Rusty Wallace. And once again, Rusty is staying right on that yellow line to the on-track interval between Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. And Rusty Wallace has been losing ground. Seven tenths of a second there in yeah. those five laps. I wonder if it might be in traffic. He has been in some pretty heavy traffic. In fact, he's in heavy traffic right now. By Morgan Shepard, who will leave that team next year to form his own. Rusty looking pretty good here after 318 of the 500 laps. He leads the goodies at a counter 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway back in a moment. Okay. This car is not working too good right now. He went walk down.
Well, you're riding around Bristol Motor Speedway, and you can jump on the information superhighway with www.nascar.com. It's NASCAR online. You can check in with the actual scoring that we're seeing. And plus, you can jump on during the week and download just a whole bunch of information regarding NASCAR racing. It's NASCAR online. Well, the driver in trouble and losing positions is Dale Jarrett. He's back to seventh. time because Dale will have to come in and get that problem corrected. He obviously was in need of a pit stop to correct whatever problem he was experiencing and now the sixth caution comes out on lap 330. Gary Bradbury. And the car won't start. He's dead in the water. It looked like something. It looked like Dale Jarrett's car. Something broke on it. It really looked like something broke. Bill Weber, what's going on with the 88? Well, he thought he had a tire going down. These guys were on the wall waiting for him. The signboard was out for Dale Jarrett. Then the spin, the caution, and they celebrated the caution coming out. They're waiting for DJ to come down pit road. Huge, huge break for Dale Jarrett. And here come those on the lead lap, led by Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, Mark Martin, Jimmy Spencer, Ricky Rudd, and Dale Jarrett. Also, Mike Walter coming in. Here's Bill Weber. Well, Dale Jarrett weaves his way in here, and he's got it parked in his pit. They go around to the right side. They're going to make a track bar adjustment and add a round of fight. The right side tire is cleaning the windshield. Now it'll be a four-tire change. Gordon and Labonte also on pit road. Rusty Wallace on pit road for tires and fuel. Working on the left side here on DJ's car. DJ is away, kicking around the 41. The 24 is already on its way. DJ has to back it up for a piece. He was blocked in by the 41. Backstretch, John Kernan. Ward Burton should move up to about the sixth position. He was running seventh. Cruz already changed right side tires. There goes the bottom spinner. Mark Martin. This guy's on a good stop for Ward Burton. It looks like he might be when he goes to the line. All of this under caution. A lot of activity on pit road. Under caution for the sixth time tonight. Back in just a moment. Now would be a good time to uh, telestrate that line which Bob was talking about with Jeff Gordon, the champion. Yep. I'll wait till next break to go, <laughs> but I will be going soon. Clear the way back there. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> oh, no. Why did that make any difference, Mikey? I'm going anyway. Oh, he wants his place to hide. What's that? <laughs> Bob brought up the new rule change on the champion Champions. not getting the pick and we could tell straight that line that the, all the controversy is about so the Kevin Clark rule yeah yeah okay and while you're hustling I'll hustle <laughs> get ready here are you going to go to break right away hey that's racing Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, Bill Weber, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Bristol Motor Speedway. We're under caution. Here's why. Dale Jarrett has moved over. Ricky Rudd's on the outside. That was a battle for position. He gets in the back of the 95. Gary Bradbury has shown his forward, and Bradbury loses control, and that brought out the caution play. Now, Dale Jarrett was struggling. He thought maybe he had a tire going down, but the report is that all four tires that came off Dale Jarrett's car were okay. Getting set for a restart in a couple of more laps. 334 down of the 500 here at Bristol. Back with more in just a moment.
Bob's a big liar, ain't he? Under green here at Bristol Motor Speedway, and the goodies had a counter 500. We're riding on top of Rusty Wallace's car, and up ahead is the leader, Jeff Gordon. Rusty beginning to work on him. There he goes. Man, man, I'm getting to these corners like he shot out of a cannon. Into the lead. That car is hooked up. Driving the daylight out. But Jeff Gordon is staying with him at least. Oh, oh he sure is staying with him. <laughs> he said, Hi, Rusty. Nice to meet you. Still here. Said you better set one on the right or you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> to go, Benny. You know what that means. You got a high 57. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Jimmy Spencer started 15th, running fourth. Jeff Burton started 21st. He's pinned on the back stretch and running ninth. Good run for Ward. Jim Bebichek, the 87 car, the Burger King car, back on the track. And now Rush is starting for the little up and Jeff Terry Labonte staying close in third. And Jimmy Spencer hanging in there in four spots. There he is, 23 car. Smoking Joe. Boy, this has been a great run for Jimmy, had it? Yes, it has. Some of Jimmy Spencer's best runs in his career have come here at Bristol. But he's, he didn't, I don't think he's won in Bristol, and he has won at other places, Daytona and Talladega. His best finish here as a matter of fourth Benny was in the spring race of 93 when he finished fourth. Mark Martin, a fifth place car. Got a little racing group in front of himself and behind him. There's sixth place Ricky Rudd. Robert Presley is in 35th position. Got in trouble real early in the race. Jim Burton, he was involved in the biggest crash of the night down in turn one. And Mike Walter has managed to stay on the lead lap and stay in the top ten nearly all race. He's running seventh and another good performance by Michael Walter. And right behind him is Dave Jarrett. Line. There you go. That's a 98 spotter, I think. Ward Burton is right behind Dale Jarrett. Ooh, is he? Works on Michael there a little bit. And takes that spot away. Jarrett apparently has a car running a little better than before. Oh, there's a spin. Raymond comes 
Got it refired, but yeah. the thing's all the tires are flat is dragging the ground. Yeah. Stuck break because he yep. had he stayed up there in the top ten yep. all night. Now they should be able to go the rest of the way from here. I think it would have been questionable there a while ago if they had like 170 laps to go before. to do a NASCAR Winston Cup race at. These people that come here for this night race at Bristol are always among the most enthusiastic of the entire year that we experience. And they are here by the thousands tonight. Yeah, by the thousands is correct. Bruce Smith hopes to have 130,000 seats around this half-mile racetrack by the time we come here next year. Can you believe that? All right, let's take a look at uh, what happened that caused this most recent caution period. Watch the right of your screen. It looks like uh, Craven gets loose coming off the turn. He might have been just a little bit low coming off the turn. The back end breaks loose, and then the tire starts popping as he locked the brakes up. And then it just simply got down the frame, Benny, and he couldn't go. That's right. I mean, he did get the engine refired, but the car was dragging the air to the point it would not roll. Bill Weber... Well, Ricky Craven has limped in here, sparking and sputtering. The car now sits on pit road. Changed the left side. They're working on the right side. Fluid pouring out of the back. They had a great car, but they're not going to have very good finish. Back up top. Yes, indeed. He was having a great night. Had run in the top ten all race long. It was ten, battling for that position with Bobby Hamilton when the incident occurred. Michael Walter is on pit road in ninth position. Be good strategy stop and get some fresh tires right now. Yep, and some gas. They can go the rest of the way now. We'll be back in just a moment. I think that was an excellent strategy. He only loses two positions. RPM. He was ninth, and he'll be eleventh now. Oh, okay. 43 and 18. Oh, still okay. Okay, good. Michael's going to be back tonight, yes. so he did lose a thing you for sure. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Put it in preview so I can look at it before I get to it. Thank you. Uh, no. <laughs> Thanks. We haven't mentioned the 30 either to change carburetors. So it's a 1, 7, and 30. 
dime back in? Yes. Who can he beat? Well, <laughs> he's got a long way to go, doesn't he? coming up tomorrow on ESPN and ESPN2 beginning at 7.45 tomorrow morning. Breakfast at Belgium, the Grand Prix race. That's at 7.45. RPM today at 11 o'clock on the deuce. Then tune over to the Classic Network at 12.30. Benny and Dave and everybody will be there for the Parts America 150 followed on ESPN2 by the Featherlight Modifieds and then a wrap-up on RPM tonight at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. You excited? If, if, I, if you don't know what the Parts America 150 is, it's the Craftsman Truck Series. And, yes, I am very, very excited. And I'll tell you what, I am very excited about seeing the Modifieds. Here's Jerry Punch with some pit strategy. Robin Pemberton, you guys pitted on lap 330. That means 170 if it stays green. First of all, can you make it on fuel? It'll be close. These cautions will help here, but uh, everybody stayed out. Everybody's in the same boat. I mean, there's been a caution every 60 or 75 laps from now, you know. So if we'd have, if we'd have come in, uh, I think the 24 probably would have stayed out. And, hell, we probably got one of them wrecks. So you might be you might be close, but you had no choice. There's no choice right now. Okay, Robin said they're going to be close on field, but they didn't have a choice. They had to stay out. So Rusty Wallace and the others stay out. He leads over Jeff Gordon, Terry Lavani, Jimmy Spencer, and Mark Martin. We'll be right back. Said that the 21 well, was the only was, one. He didn't know that. He didn't know that. Is he 18 a lap down or not? Well, that's, I don't know. I don't know how he got a lap down. I don't think he is. Wallace, your leader, with Gordon in second spot and then a battle for position back of them. As we were watching the speech, shot, Sterling Marlin dove off the banking on the pit road. Sterling was already two laps down, now losing more. I think only one car that started the race isn't out there. That would be the 28 of Ernie Irvin. The 7 has come back onto the track, so has the 1 of Rick Mast. And so I believe that Ernie Irvin's car is the only one that is behind the wall. Everybody else still left, which is pretty amazing for Bristol. It really is, and especially as many cautions as we've had, spins and wrecks and all that kind of stuff. We have had a lot of damage impaired. You can see Ken Schrader's Budweiser car that's damaged in the front end. Yeah, you can see the racetrack right around there. You see that spot? There was a spot in the left front. But... There we go. Yeah. See that spot right there? That's the yeah. racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Tate flapping in the breeze.
seventh position. Jared in 88. Burton in 22. And Burton gets under him. And well, they had a scramble back there uh, trying to get around some lap traffic. Ricky Rudd finally got around Brett Bodine, and so he just pulled on the way. Remember a while ago, Jared lost several positions. Then a caution came out. They checked all four tires. They were okay. And Dale is running well again. Now the battle becomes between 21 of Waltrip and Burton. And Waltrip just passed him, but Waltrip did make a pit stop. He did make a pit stop, took on four tires. I think that was a very good strategy on their part. No question but what they can go the rest of the way as far as fuel is concerned. And uh, he didn't lose anything. He was running ninth when he came into the pit. He was running ninth when he came out of the pit because the other cars that were on the lead lap pitted also on the back straight. That would be Bobby Labonte and Bobby Hamilton. Well, among those that John Kernan listed as dark horses, certainly Michael is doing the best. He's eighth. The other dark horses that he mentioned were Kenny Wallace, who's 16th, and the 41 of Craven, who was doing well until he crashed a few laps ago and has now fallen back to 22nd, six laps behind. Mark Martin comes in on the 23 of Spencer for fourth. Spencer goes up the hill, and Mark says, see ya, Jimmy. He drove right on around. Mark was the last to win this race from the pole. That happened back in 1993. Mark says, if you can hold the gate like that, I'm going to drive through. Darrell walked to the 17. North. Still there, clear. Darrell Waltrip's running 14, by the way, in the lap down. Maybe let Dale Garrett get by, but he's going to hold his brother up there just a minute. There's a Napa field summary. Wasn't quite enough room. Now there might be some room. One more. Closing fast. Clear. That's Darrell's spotter. One of the spotters told me last week that the uh, phrases to use in Michigan were inside. Clear high, clear low, and clear low, and whoops. <laughs> One more. And a spotter here told me that the key phrase was, are you okay? <laughs> they clear you behind the 18. We haven't seen any of that tonight. No serious crashes at all, thank goodness. Stay with them out there, Jerry. Stay with them. The rest of the guys all have new tires on. All those cars should thank you. And on new tires, stay with them. That's Jeff Hammond. Yeah, welcome to his driver. Darryl Walter. It's Bobby Labonte and Bobby Hamilton. They're the last cars on the lead lap. They are running in the 10th and 11th positions. Bobby Labonte, 11. Bobby Hamilton, 10. Now, there's no doubt that all those cars, the 18, the 43, the 21, that stopped just a moment ago, can go the distance on the fuel because they stopped with 145 laps to go. But some of these cars did not stop. They've got to run 170 laps. We heard Robin Tem Pemberton say, yes, we think we can make it. We don't know. But And in a survey that our, our pit reporters did, all of them said they could make it except Ned, Dale, Jarrett's crew, so they might not be able to make it. Well, I'm surprised that they might have been able to come in during that time, because you get late in the race, you normally don't have as many cautions as you do earlier. You only have 11 cars on the lead lap. Of course, most of the race cars are still out on the racetrack, but uh, I'm surprised they didn't come in top off. Let's go to the pits and Jerry Punch. What Robin Pemberton didn't tell us was that he already knew that the 24 car and the 5 car were getting excellent fuel mileage. Both could go easily 175 laps. And the 21 car that made the pit stop is smoking. Apparently a problem with Michael Walton. Well, it might have slipped coming off the turn. Let's see if we see it again. It was smoking pretty bad down there in the first and second turns last lap, but I don't see any this time. Well, he looked like tire smoke. Yeah, he, he probably just slipped a little bit coming off the turn. Dale Jarrett gets under Ricky Rudd, and Michael Walter's going to come right with 
Rudd trying. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is again. Yeah, now. Sure is. There it's not is. tire smoke. Yeah. If it, unless it's a unless it's a tire. I mean, a fender rubbing the tire. I don't know. It comes and goes. That's the strange thing about it. Well, that is somewhat of an indication that it might be a tire rubbing a little bit, but you think that it would do it every time he goes into the corner. I don't know. Rudd has nine more races to keep his streak going. He's won a race every year since 1983. Is winless so far in 1996. They are the top five after 389 laps at Bristol Motor Speedway. Folks, that ready guy. Yep. Something else. Rusty Wallace is leading ESPN Speed World presentation of the Goodies Headache Counter 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway, being brought to you by Craftsman, a line of 2,200 hand tools made in America. Guaranteed forever only at Sears. By Texaco Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. And by the Miller Brewing Company. Proud sponsor of the Miller Racing Team. We race for beer. And it is the Miller Ford that leads with Rusty Wallace behind the wheel. And Jeff Gordon is the second car back there as we look from Rusty Wallace's machine. See Rusty Wallace as he closes in on the back of Lake Speed, and that's Chad Little once again in the 29 car. Not sure who's driving that 29 car in Darlington. We had Greg Sachs in it for a number of laps. Now Chad Little for this race. has a one-point lead over Ford. Chevy has 11 wins and 13 poles, and Ford has 10 wins and 6 poles. It couldn't get any closer than that. 157 to 156, and Pontiac, of course, third with 82. Rusty Wallace still not able to get by. Let's, what, I try to show you some of the things that we talk about. We talk about adding weight. We do it with this bar right there. That's an extension that sits on top of the right rear spring is right down there. All right. This back here is the adjustment for the panhard bar. They can raise that or lower it. That's the extension that goes down to that. These cables that you see here dangling, that's for the roof flaps. 
So when the flaps go up, that goes up, catches, so that they only go about 45, about 90 degrees up, that they don't tumble over. Those hoses that we see here go in and cool uh, things like the gear in the rear end. It goes to the radio that cools the gear in the gear oil. Sometimes they have transmission. You ever think about being an artist, Benny? Yeah, right. <laughs> we see an antenna yeah. for the radio. And more hoses coming in. Going down to, once again, those hoses coming in. And let's see. I don't like that. That looks like battery cables. The blue ho blue cables look like battery cables. Probably are. And let's see. What's that? That's the driver. Oh yeah. He's busy. <laughs> Michael Walter. And here's the trouble up in turn four. Looks like that John Andretti has had serious contact with the wall. The front end of that car is torn away. And either Bobby Labonte or Dave Marcus is involved in it. It's Bobby Labonte coming right off of turn four here. He's he's getting out of the car. He's hung got his he's foot on. Yeah, he's got his foot on right now. But, oh, he kicked the door. <laughs> his car up against the wall just at the start of the main straightaway. Bobby Labonte was running in 11th position. You normally don't see Bobby get lose his cool but he's he's upset about something sure is and he probably has reason to him wow bobby oh, was upset that is something rare that you very seldom see bobby Labonte get upset so there was something big that happened there that caused him to get upset meanwhile those on the lead lap come in for a pit stop well, that take all the gas mileage situation out let's go to the pit stop Expecting a four-car change for Rusty Wallace. You look now, pit road, Jeff Gordon. He'll take a round of bite out of the right rear. Terry Levani also in the pit. 21 car. Let's go forward. Uh, Michael Walker. Now, Rusty Wallace liked to see this caution flag. They were very, very close on fuel. As he is down and away, the 24 and 5 car could have made it on fuel. Problem with the left rear on Terry Levani's car. He is still in the pits. As now, finally, he's off the jack and down and away. Let's go to the back pitch with John Curtin. Ward Curtin was not going to be able to make it away, make it all the way at the race at State Green. Chris Nussie's crew told me they'd have to pit with about 25 laps left for two seconds of fuel. Now, problem on the right rear, or on the left rear tire. Finally, they get the lug nuts tight, and Ward is away, but he doesn't have to worry about fuel. Ward can make it the rest of the way. As will everybody. Both drivers involved in this incident. There's John Andretti. He's finally crawled out of his car. And, of course, Bobby Labonte uh, was out earlier. Very, very unhappy with what had occurred. Maybe we can tell by uh, the 42 onboard camera what happened. It's way up ahead. and Not really. Now, Bobby Labonte, whose car will end up. Oh, he, he hits Andretti. Yeah. Andretti was stopped yeah. in the track, and Labonte came along and hit him and then slid up into the wall. Bobby is a little bit upset and therefore does not want to talk with us right now. The Little Caesars Kmart Ford is in bad shape, but John Andretti is okay. 412 laps have been completed. Less than 100 to go here as the caution light is on for the eighth time this evening. Back in a moment. I don't know what Labonte... Uh, Unless he was mad at himself, I don't know. Spotter. What I don't understand is <laughs> Robbie Gordon, you know, did that at the IndyCar race. <laughs> A 
That's correct. But why did he throw his gloves at that car? He just wanted to throw something at somebody. Boy, that car's a mess, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's a good indication about that banking, how steep it is. Yeah. And you see that guy sliding down through there? Now we see John Andre. They're having trouble. Back at Bristol Motor Speedway, they can't get John Andretti's car down off the bank, and that just goes to show you how steep these banks are here. 36 degrees. That car is a mess, and uh, they have not yet, yet got it off the banking. Bristol brings out the best and the worst in drivers and always brings out emotion. Bobby Labonte experienced some of that emotion just a few minutes ago when he got out of his car. I mean, the kid had a great run going. He gets out. And he's just so frustrated, he can't stand it. I mean, man, I had, he was in the lead lap. And it's, it's over with. I mean, man, oh, man, why did this have to happen to me? And then walking down the banking, he was limping slightly, maybe because uh, he kicked the car. I don't know, but I hope he's, he's not hurt. He is a mild-mannered person, does not show emotion very often, but uh, this track brings it out, doesn't it? Sure does. Yes, we've seen it lots of times on this racetrack. Still trying to get to Andretti's car. He was running uh, on the lead lap, and there were less than uh, 100 laps to go. In fact, about 85 laps to go when the incident occurred. Well, we wonder who's going to win this thing. Last week, the true value man of the race was, of course, Dale Jarrett for winning the... Uh, race at Michigan International Speedway. After 21 races, he is ahead in every category from last year. Look at the points position. He was 14th at this point last year. He's fourth in points this year, has three more wins, 10 more races led, and four more top tens than in 1995. True value uh, racer of last week, Goodwrench 400, Dale Jarrett, uh, thousand dollars donated on his behalf to Brenner's Children Hospital and Dale contributes to many charities. Let's go to Bill Weber. And Bobby Labonte is uh, climbed out of the interstate batteries rig. What happened, Bob? Oh man, I just drilled the 37 car up there. He was spun out and I was trying to pass that 42 car again and was on the outside of him. I guess he realized I was there after about the third lap and uh, went to the outside. The 37 car was there and I didn't know he was there. We, we were talking on the radio trying to get NASCAR to move the 42 and I guess in between all that stuff, I hit the 37 car as hard as I could because I couldn't go anywhere else. So that's just the way it goes. Uh, had a pretty decent car, but uh, finished it off. Okay. Normally very mild-mannered. Obviously, this track can really bring out the frustration in the driver. You could be a wolf man every now and then, but sometimes you can only take so much. You get pretty PO'd for a while, but you get over it after a while. It's just racing. At least we got Darlings in to go to next weekend. But when uh, we try to get by some guys, man, I tell you, it's tough to do out there. You know, they didn't mention in the driver's meeting for the slow cars to go to the outside, and I guess they got to do it next time. But they didn't do it this time, and maybe they need to say something. Okay, Bob, thanks a lot. He came out of the rig to talk after he cooled off a little bit. Bobby Labonte. There's the badly battered car that Bobby Labonte got out of. We're still under caution, so we're going to take another break here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Stay with us. said on the radio he'd get out of the car if it, if it was not so bad to drive. Huh. 
pick. Earnhardt said that he would get out of the car and let Mike Wallace take it over if the car was not so bad to drive. What? No, I just said he would get out of the car and let Mike Wallace get in if the car were not so bad to drive. In other words, he's staying in. Make, make Mike Wallace look bad. Are so bad. Yeah. No. <laughs> Jesus, Come Say on. that one more time for me, John. Let me see if I can. Would y'all clean the wax out of your ears? <laughs> By the way, Bill. Bill, you did an excellent job on our on NASCAR tonight. That was just superb. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. That was good. And also yeah, forgetting Bobby okay. Labonte. That was great. Yeah, that was good, too. <laughs> Thank you. My Thank you, Bert. Hey, uh, it was... Cleanup continues down in turn number four. We continue to be under our eighth caution of the evening. 421 laps have been completed. Let's take a look at the quest for the cup and the uh, four horsemen, as we will call them, those in contention for the championship. As far as momentum is concerned, the average finish the last six races. The award there to Dale Jarrett was a 5.5 average finish in the last six races. Now our next category. Average finish at the last race at the remaining tracks. Well, the edge goes there to Jeff Gordon, who has a 6.1 average finish at those race tracks. Compare that to Dale Jarrett's 12.4. And how about the important 26th or worst place finish in 1996? Terry Labonte has the edge there with only one. Jeff Gordon has five. So that gives you an indication as to what we might look for in the races remaining in the season. Now, the points, if they were awarded right now, would show Terry Labonte in the lead with Gordon second. Dale Jarrett would move up a spot. Dale Earnhardt down a position. And Mark Martin would remain in fifth. Dale Earnhardt is shown in 26th position at the moment, 21 laps down. We'll take another break while we're under caution. The fact that, I mean, the fact that he talked to Bill made it work. I mean, that, yeah, that made it work. I just, you know, it a, I, I just hate to see it. I just hate to see it. And that guy listening to the conversation with the white beard, Norm Miller, the president of the State Battery, yeah. who has a book out, by yeah. the way, doesn't he? Yep, he does, yeah. It's beyond the norm. Yep. Good book. Is it? I've, I've read a good portion of it. I haven't read it all yet. Wallace has already clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps. Michael Walter watches all this action. Jeremy Mayfield trying to get it around uh, Daryl Walter. 
Darrell hanging up there. Darrell is running in 11th place, one lap down. Now, Mayfield is, Darrell might not know that he's three laps down. And Jeremy's going to have to make a decision. It's too long now. Should I be up here racing with these guys? Is either one lap down or some other no laps down? First and second, it's what about uh, four not five much. Like, yeah, that's what it is. Not much. <laughs> Jeff Gordon looks like he has his car adjusted as well as he's had it all night long. And this is the time to have it adjusted, right? Is is near the end of the race. This was the site of Rusty's first NASCAR Winston Cup win, April of 1986. You watch another battle of the upper right of your screen. That's Jared and Labonte battling for fifth. Or fourth, whichever. That's fifth, that fifth, you're right. Yeah. Jared has fifth, and Labonte has sixth. Kenny Spencer is fourth. There's the first and second place car of Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. Cars. Mark Martin is just not that far away. There he is. And Mark's car looks to really run well on a long run. I don't know if you call 60 laps a long run or not. Mark Martin starting from the pole will win $68,400 in Unical bonus money if he wins the race. It was last won by Jeff Gordon at Pocono in June at nine races ago. Here's Ricky Rudd and Ward Burton as they go for the eighth position. And Ricky Rudd's running that Jimmy Spencer line. Goes in more high, stays high. Well, that time he stayed about the middle of the racetrack. Oh, that time he went yeah. to the moon. Yeah, he sure did. Meanwhile, the separation between Jared and Labonte about the same as Jared comes up on Daryl Waltrip. Is he 11th, the lap down? Daryl moved up and gave you room. Now, Jared's going to go by. And Labonte will come right with him. Now, his brother's going to come up on him, Daryl's brother. And that's how far they are behind the leader of the race. Mark Martin may be the fastest car on the racetrack. He closes in on Jeff Gordon. But Rusty now pulling away a little bit from Jeff Gordon. Might have said, uh, hey, not only worry about the 24, but ooh, Gordon and Earnhardt get together a little bit. Huh. And Earnhardt back in 25th spot, three laps down. And that let Rusty pull farther away. 
What I started to say is that maybe the crew said, don't only worry about that 24. That six car is coming, so maybe Rusty turned the wick up a little bit. I'm sorry, you're not he's 22 laps down. Yeah, we can see just how much of an advantage that Rusty was able to get. Ward Burton and Ricky Rudd just going at it tooth and nail. Rudd using that high line, and Ward closes in and pulls alongside him once in a while as he's doing now, but Rudd has been able to hold off the advance and does again. Boy, that's frustrating. As if he's got to run down the back stretch. Nope, Rudd's going to hold him off. Well, Rudd's uh, giving him plenty time. of room. Not yeah, this time. He's got it. Moves up to eight. Rusty Wallace leaves the Goodies Headache Powder 500 at Bristol Motor Speedway with now just 51 laps to go. <laughs> oh, well, Lynn. tonight at Bristol Motor Speedway, Northeast Tennessee, the Goodies Headache Powder 500, being led by Rusty Wallace. Tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern Time from Watkins Glen International, the Craftsman Truck Series, the Parts America 150. Benny Parsons, Davis Bain on hand to see if Mike Skinner can hang on to his points lead or whether Ron Hornaday Jr. can take the lead. It'll be at 12.30 Eastern tomorrow afternoon. Jarrett and Spencer hooked up in a good battle. Jarrett goes to fourth. Another battle, this one for second position. Mark Martin and Jeff Morton. We can listen to Mark Martin's car and tell that he's not able to get on the gasoline accelerator. He gets on, he's a brickler, he's not able to wade in that thing and hold it wide open off the corner like he would in qualifying. Listen. Almost on the straight of it before he's able to go all the way down. And you're only on it for just a couple seconds, aren't you? Yeah. Off the gas. There's he. Johnny Benson, the 30 car, and Kenny Wallace, the 81, the square D car. Gordon gets by, Mark Martin. Tries to get back, gets a little bit loose, he comes off the corner. Kenny Wallace is three laps down, but he's in 15th position. Martin in the corner, turn that wheel. Comes off the corner. All that is done by field. See that heavy traffic up ahead of him.
I think Earnhardt with the last time has moved it over to let Jeff go by on the outside, and Jeff had committed to go by on the inside. Spencer losing another spot to the five car of Labonte, so that puts Labonte up in fifth, Spencer back to sixth. Seven, six seconds separate first and second. Now it's 1.70. Well, Rusty passed a car. And the two car did pass a car. There goes Rusty Wallace. Goes in behind Derek Cope with 12 car. Maintain about the same that time. Yep. And the laps are rapidly clicking off here. 32 more to go for Preston now. See when he, Jeff Gordon passed the 29 car. He lost about two tenths of a second, about 15 hundredths of a second to the leader, Rusty Wallace. But it will average out. Rusty will do the same thing when he runs across the traffic. Rusty is in heavy traffic. We talk about handling, folks, and it is so critical, especially on these short racetracks, being able to use the accelerator off the corner. That's what we talk about by handling. And we see Mark Martin, we listen to his engine and the how he literally is using accelerators. Just think the cars are running back in seventh and eighth. They're using even less. Well, the dollar back slowed dramatically coming off the of turn two, but he did get back down off the bank and one car was about to run into it, but managed not to. and a half second lead now on Gordon and Mark Martin. Rusty has recorded 12 wins and eight second place finishes in the last 31 short track races that have been run in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. No. RustyWallace.com. I'll be done. Just 20 more laps to go in the Goodies Headache Powder 500 from Bristol Motor Speedway. Sixth place battle is between Jimmy Spencer at 23 and Michael Waltrip in 21. On board Michael's car. And Spencer is still running that high line. Don't know if his car won't work down on the bottom of the racetrack, but he's been going high. That usually, that time he's stayed down a little bit, but that usually opens the door for somebody to go under it. We've seen several cars pass him. But he's still done a good job of staying up there in the top five and top ten, certainly all night. In 
the last five races here, Jimmy Spencer's best finish was 13th. That came in the spring race this year. Looks like Michael's going to try to go on the outside. Now that'd be a switch for Jimmy Spencer to be passed on the outside. Michael's close to his best finish of the year. His best finish of the year was a fifth at Talladega. He's seventh right now, but a good run for Michael Waltrip. And how about the 24 the 6? Well, there she is in the same position, but now we go back to this battle, and I thought Michael might have a run on it, and he still might. <laughs> but he can't quite get that traction he needs coming off the turn down on the inside. Jimmy's certainly giving him room down on the inside. And I guess we could go back to that very first round of pit stops, huh, BP, when uh, Spencer went for track position, got it. Oh, oh there he got a little loose. He got position. it loose and lost that spot, yeah. But nevertheless, uh, he did get track position, and he's been able to hold it all race long. Yes, he has. up to sixth. Let's see what Mr. Excitement does here. Big traffic jam ahead of Walter Van Spencer. Bradbury, Kenny Wallace, and Dick Trickle. Popo working that traffic on the outside of one, dip down to the inside of the other one. Spencer comes right on this. Telling Jimmy Spencer the 22 car is not that far behind Ward Burton. Meanwhile, you see on your scoring pylon that the separation between first and second is still right around the one and a half second area. And 10 laps to go. 10, and that boy, it'll take long run 10 laps around Bristol. Sure does it. I think it's going to be over in just a few minutes. These laps are about, I would guess, about 16 and a half seconds. That's what they're running, Benny. The king of the short tracks, Rusty Wallace, is about to add another one to his resume, but let's not be too premature. He's yeah. got a lot of yeah. traffic to go yeah. through. Yeah, about half the field is directly in front of him. And there's only one car right now, Ernie Irvin, between he and Jeff Gordon. Gordon's got away about three or four car lengths from Mark Martin. But with these cars running side by side, that's tough for Rusty. And there, look at, there he is, Jeff Gordon's right there. Remember last year when Dale Earnhardt closed the gap in the last couple of laps and came on to uh, one second. Our mechanic of the race is Donnie Wingo. Western Auto, Western, yeah, Western Auto sponsorship goes to the Western Auto mechanic. And Donnie Wingo is the crew chief for Jimmy Spencer's Smoking Joe car. That uh, interval now down to less than a second here with five laps to go. We're watching from Mark Martin's perspective. That's Gordon up ahead. Just a matter of car links now. There's Rusty Wallace. There's Johnny Benson's yellow car. And directly in front of him is Rusty Wallace. Running out of laps. Now the 12 car of Derek Cope is in there. Man, oh man. As tired as these drivers are, they're still going at it as hard as they can. And the white flag will be coming out next time. Wallace. It turns three and four. Here's the white flag. One to go. about the same.
Mark Martin in third. Rusty Wallace brings it off the fourth corner and wins the goodies at a counter 500. Rusty Wallace, his sixth victory here at Bristol. 46th career NASCAR Winston Cup win and ties it for 11th on the all-time list with Buck Baker. Spacer finishes about a car length ahead of Ward Burton. Bill, Bill Weber. Weber. Well, Robin's still on top of the toolbox. Now he finally jumps down. And Robin, I told you before the race, the numbers were yours. How about it? Yeah, it was great. Uh, you know, the guys did a great job on pits, and I always got to compliment them. You know, uh, Rusty drove the smartest race I've ever seen him drive. And uh, the fifth win, I at least got to say hello to Lisa, Bray, and Briggs at home. I've neglected them a little bit this year. But everybody did. It was a great team effort for us. You know, great. Well, they'll be able to hold off that 24 car, too, down the stretch there. It's awful tough. Uh, they're awful good. Uh, you know, what can I say? Traffic got them. They would catch us, and the traffic would hold them up a little bit, you know. But we've all been there, gone through the same thing before. What can I say? They've run a great race. It was a clean race for the leaders anyways. And, uh, you know, thanks for the lap cars getting out of the way. <laughs> Number five. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, a lot of times five in a career is pretty good. But uh, five in one year is pretty good. It's a great race team. Congratulations to Robin Pepperton, Rusty Wallace, and the Miller Ford in victory lane at Bristol. It's the 11th Ford win of 1996, and they take the manufacturer's points lead with Rusty's victory here tonight. The flash bulbs are going off as Rusty makes his way toward victory lane. We'll be back to talk with the winner of the Goodies Heading Counter 500 in just a moment. Wallace wins. We on till eleven o'clock. <laughs> in our McDonald's Winter Circle interview from Dr. Jerry Punch. As the fireworks explode in the background, Rusty, congratulates Robin Pemberton on a great call. Rusty, 40 a week ago, you're just getting better with age. I think we're getting better with age. Him and I were 40. We had pretty good in the pal. Oh, yeah, we're good at the park. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you, the motor run good. He made, Robin made some really killer calls today. The car was real hot right on handle perfect all day. You know, you, it's almost it couldn't get much easier on a tough half mile like Bristol. You made it look pretty easy tonight. I know it wasn't, though. Well, we worked really hard on the car to make sure it handled great. And on those restarts, man, I just didn't have any lead in my rear, and I had to get going. I just want to get away from them. There's old Gordon Becker chomping at a big complainer, and I had to get, to get away from them. You know? Whole car run good, and I'm really happy the way everything went for everybody. I'd like to thank all the sponsors. 
like to uh, congr- or, uh, have to send our condolences to T. Wayne, who, T. Wayne, who lost his father. And uh, I'd like to take all those Democrats and that are trying to get up tobacco out here and tell them to stick it up. You know where. Vote Dole, man. Do that. <laughs> Hey, speaking of which, talking about victories, your win tonight gives Ford the manufacturer's point lead. Well, that's good. At least I can add to something, and uh, I love it. I'd just like to thank my entire team, the engine department, everybody, all our sponsors, Fleetwood, Mobile, uh, Mead Paper Company, Miller Brewing Company, Goodyear. The tires are really great today. You know, we didn't like the tires first race. These were really awful, awful good tires. Hey, your engine builder, Mike Aggie, told you you would not have a problem again like you had last week at Michigan, losing the motor, and, and he, he kept his promise. Yeah, that deal last week was awful fluke, and it's it's one thing when you lose a motor and you don't know why, but we know exactly why the motor went, and that's good. We haven't had any engine problems to speak of all year long, and the car's been fast. You know, I screwed up a Watkins Glen. We lost a motor at Michigan. This is our fifth win, and we're still going for ten. Rusty Wallace in victory lane for the fifth time in 1996. Hey, what a celebration. Let's check in with the second-place finisher, Jeff Gordon. Well, Jeff, you had a heck of a run, but you needed longer green flag runs. I tell you what, I've never felt better after a Bristol race. I'm ready to go another 100 laps. And we can I, arrange that. I wish I could have. Uh, you know, my car was so strong on long runs, it just took it forever to get going. But, man, once I got my rhythm, once the tires, you know, came to our pressures, man, that thing was strong. And We showed that early on, but, you know, Rusty was so strong, I just have to let him go because he was eating us up on new tires and on short runs. But uh, I really believe, you know, that we could have run, run him down. We were running him down there at the end. I tell you, lap cars were just off, which is normal here for Bristol, and you got to deal with that. But uh, I'm real happy with the second-place finish. Just uh, a strong effort. This is what we need to do tonight. And you picked up a few points, sole possession of second place now. Well, you know, you always want to win. I mean, <laughs> I can't ever forget about that. But, uh, you know, the points are, are definitely there. we still got, uh, you know, nine or ten races left to go, and, and we gained on them. That's what we got to do. And uh, I'm real proud of the team. They kept me up front, and track positions are real important here. So I uh, want to, uh, you know, thank God for keeping everything safe on that car, man. I tell you, all four fenders are on it, and that's saying something when you leave here. And he came home second tonight. There you've heard from the first two finishers, Rusty Wallace, the winner, and Jeff Gordon, second place. And as we indicated, Ford now has possession of the Manufacturers Championship. Jeff Gordon in sole possession of second place in the point standings. Back in a moment. What is this, Ned? Is this yours? No, I, the thing's laying here when I got here. I have no idea what it is. Magnifying glass, isn't it? Is this yours, Carter? Is this yours? Okay. Okay. When I twist it. Todd, Todd Parrott twisted his knee. They thought it might be broken. He's going to take him and probably get it looked at. Uh, it's adding to the mystery of possibly some of the suspense coming up at Darlington. I'm here on pit wall with him, but uh, they think it might be broken. They're going to get him checked. Wow. has come away with a victory on ES Speed World's coverage of the Goodies Headache Counter 500. Being brought to you by Pennzoil Motor Oil, first to fully achieve the tougher 1997 GF2 performance standard. By Firestone, America's tire since 1900. By Chevrolet, one car company has won more races in the history of NASCAR, genuine Chevrolet. And by the NASCAR Story, to order call 871 NASCAR. Coming up in here in just a few moments, ESPN Sports Center. And what are they going to tell us about? Well, some late inning baseball heroics. The kickoff classic. I can't believe it's time for college football already. And the preseason NFL action. All that coming up right after we conclude our coverage here on ESPN. And we are going to be taking another break and be back to wrap things up from Bristol Motor Speedway in just a moment, where Rusty Wallace has come home the winner.
Hey, Lynn. Do me a favor. Put some plastic on that coat. Is there a piece, is there still, is there a piece of plastic over there? Welcome back to Bristol Motor Speedway, and here are the unofficial results of the race here this evening. Bobby Hamilton finished in 10th position, the last car on the lead lap. Wallace, Gordon, Martin, Jarrett, Labati, Waltrip, Spencer, Burton, and Rudd preceded him. And Lake Speed, Jeremy Mayfield, Sterling Marlin. Comes back after his crash, finishes 18. There's Morgan, Strickland, Craven, Bobby Hill, and Chad Little. Earnhardt finishes 24th. And the rest of the finishing positions, four cars were out of the race with a checkered flag drop. And obviously all of these cars on this page had a, had a lot of problems. Now the points. Labonte holds on to the lead. Jeff Gordon moves up one. Dale Jarrett moves up one. Earnhardt down two. Martin the same. Rudd stays the same. Rusty Wallace gains three positions. Schrader and Marlin stay eighth and ninth. And Ernie Irvin, the big loser here tonight, he finished and uh, loses three positions. Now, Winston Cup qualifying Friday from Darlington on the deuce. The Bush Grand National Duraloop 200 from Darlington at 1 o'clock next Saturday. Then Sunday, NASCAR today, followed by the Mountain Dew Southern 500 at 1 o'clock on ESPN. Can Dale Jarrett win the Winston Million? Rusty Wallace wins here tonight. Sports Center is coming up next. Thanks for joining us here tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. You want to get out, BP? Uh, all right, guys. Later. Jeff left later. long ago. Jeff left the racetrack long ago. <laughs> no, he didn't either. He can't get out, can he? What? Ask, uh, what's his name? Mike Monger. Okay. You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in... <laughs> You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage. <laughs> You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage. You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage. Okay. Quiet, please. You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. This is the 22nd race of the 1996 season and going into this event, the top four in points separated by just 137 with Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt tied for second and six through ten are separated by only 120 points. 
We'll be back with more from Bristol Motor Speedway in just a moment. Uh, You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage. Okay. Quiet, please. You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. This is the 22nd race of the 1996 season, and going into this event, the top four in points separated by just 137, with Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt tied for second, and six through ten are separated by only 120 points. We'll be back with more from Bristol Motor Speedway in just a moment. Uh... As the fireworks explode in the background, Rusty congratulates Robin Pemberton on a great call. Rusty, 40 a week ago, you're just getting better with age. I think we're getting better with age. Him and I were 40. We're getting pretty good at it, pal. Oh, yeah, we're good at the party. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you, old motor run good. He made, Robin made some really killer calls today. The car was real hot right and handled perfect all day. You know, you, it's almost it couldn't get much easier on a tough half mile like Bristol. You made it look pretty easy tonight. I know it wasn't, though. Well, we worked really hard on the car to make sure it handled great. And on those race starts, man, I just didn't have any lead in my rear, and I had to get going. I just want to get away from them because old Gordon was back there chomping at a bit complaining, and I had to get away, get away from them, you know. So old car run good, and I'm really happy the way everything went for everybody. I'd like to thank all the sponsors. I'd like to uh, congr or, uh, have to send our condolences to T. Wayne, who, T. Wayne, who lost his father. And uh, I'd like to take all those Democrats and that are trying to get a tobacco out here and tell them to stick it up. You know where. Vote Dole, man. Do that. Hey, speaking of which, talking about victories, your win tonight gives Ford the manufacturer's point lead. Well, that's good. At least I can add to something, and uh, I love it. I'd just like to thank my entire team, the engine department, everybody, all our sponsors, Fleetwood, Mobile, uh, Mead Paper Company, Miller Brewing Company, Goodyear. The tires were really great today. You know, we didn't like the tires the first race. These were really awful, awful good tires. Hey, your engine builder, Mike Eggy, told you you would not have a problem again like you had last week at Michigan losing the motor, and, and he, he kept his promise. Yeah, that deal last week was awful fluke, and it's it's one thing when you lose a motor and you don't know why, but we know exactly why the motor went, and that's good. We haven't had any engine problems to speak of all year long, and the car's been fast. You know, I screwed up at Watkins Glen. We lost a motor at Michigan. This is our fifth win, and we're still going for ten. Rusty Wallace in victory lane for the fifth time in 1996. Hey, what a celebration. Let's check in with the second-place finisher, Jeff Gordon. You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage. Okay. Quiet, please. Water. 
You're watching highlights of the Goodies Headache Powder 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. This is the 22nd race of the 1996 season, and going into this event, the top four in points separated by just 137, with Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt tied for second, and six through ten are separated by only 120 points. We'll be back with more from Bristol Motor Speedway in just a moment. <laughs> 